let's go ahead and do our faxpiration and get started. So, fax whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Yep, we're good to go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh. Okay. So, question 258. Two hundred and fifty-eight. Aww. Um, this is a sad question. Uh, who are you closest to in your immediate family? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So I'll post that up. And that would be the factspiration question this week. If you are interested in giving me a recap of what happened last week for a factspiration or a DM inspiration. Uh, please let me know by rolling a d20 in the chat. Sorry for the delay there. Um, let's see. I was like, load scripts, say words. Say words. Ah, oh, there they are. Um, nobody? Nobody wants to do the recap? All right, I'm I'll up now. Uh, does someone else want to do it? I was trying to roll in, but I am still loading. Oh, here, I'll roll for you. Oh, I got a 15. That's pretty high for uh, for a Lex roll from me. Um, all right, going once, going twice. Uh, sold to Orion for 15. All right. Well, last uh, time on Red Hand of Doom, um, guy's back uh, due to a clerical error. Ah, ha ha, jokes. Mm -hmm. um, we. <laughs> We got our our friend back. <laughs> I'm not one for making puns, so you know no, what? No, no, I'll keep take going. It. No, you're doing great. You're doing great. Keep going. Um, but yes, uh, Miss Goldenbrow uh was able to revive our friend. Um, and I guess kind of in the nick of time, because we had a couple of things that we wanted to speak to some people about. Um, one of which was uh, Dilaria and the emptiness. Uh, guy was instrumental in that um, trying to get a sense for where he is kind of mentally um, in preparation for the coming battle um, I spoke with Queen Star Singer um, about uh, the upcoming battle as well uh, passing along what information the scouts were able to kind of give us uh, the red hand arriving later this evening was pretty much the the main part of it um jert had gone off um kind of unbeknownst to ourselves uh i guess he was searching for Jarrett. um but the rest of us went to uh the emptiness to speak with him uh guy was able to get uh across to him that we would accompany him during the combat uh, seeing as a bit reacts would normally be accompanied by other creatures uh, It was good for us to level the playing field um, And then after that we decided that we wanted to track down Regirix She had Some information that would be useful to us. We had some information that would be useful to her we deemed it would be best if we come to some sort of agreement uh, leveraging Jert's past relationship with her um, so we traveled outside of the city quite a distance actually um, to a place that was known to both Jert and Jerix. Um I guess her real name is actually Arena and they kind of had a discussion um, out of character Jert was able to pass along the designs of the uh, psychic tattoos that were on Lamia, uh, the storm stone sorceress, and Regirix was able to kind of pass along information that uh, the Sanguine King is already here, though he's still in the middle of uh, waking up from his nap. Um, so with that information kind of being traded, and questions three being instated, Jert and Regirix had a night uh, together, reliving some of the lost time that they had missed, um, being split apart uh, due to their 
situation in the Feywild and in the Fey Dark. Um, but the rest of us return to Brindle in order to kind of get prepared for the coming uh, battle. Uh, eventually, Jert was able to return to us. Uh, and now we're just looking out at a sea of Red Hand troops. Um, though I think our hearts are still are still there, thanks to the music of Delirian and Guy. We won't fall this day. All right. Um, well done. Uh, would you like inspiration or a uh, fax version? Uh, I'll take DM. Okay. If anybody would like to answer the question for Faxpiration, go ahead and give me a roll into chat. Okay. Uh, another 15 coming from Orion. Going once. Going twice. Can I roll for Thalen? <laughs> Can you roll for Thanlin just to break everybody's heart? Um, I mean, sure. I like breaking hearts. I only get to do that two times oh a week. <laughs> Curse of Strahd. All right. So, uh, missing Thanlin, no more. Uh, unless anybody can beat a 19. Uh, tell us, tell us the answer to this question. Who is, who is Thanlin closest to? Who is his closest immediate family? I want to say... Well, obviously I would say Sarara, but I would guess in this case... No, Hill, I'll limit myself to this group. Ooh, no, no, no cool. this is your family. Who, I was going to say, you can your immediate family. You're considering oh. Sarana your family already. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's bold. That was bold. Um... No, this is like this is a family, like you know, the oh, people his, that, his of your, father. Of your, his father? Yeah. Okay. He started this journey because of what his father did, and Group One of Tales, his father would tell him. Oh. He picked up where his father left off, since his father technically was removed from service mm. since he got injured. Now the campaign yeah. started with both your parents dead. Um. How, how did they die, out of curiosity? What do you mean? They're still alive! Oh, they're still alive? Yes! Well, they gave you a house. I, I assume that they gave you their house because, you know, they, they left it to you. Did I think I remember did, something they, that they moved, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah they, moved. they moved to Brindle. <laughs> oh, they moved to Brindle. Okay, okay. <laughs> what the All right. fuck? Damn, if I had known that, I would have killed them. I oh, just well. <laughs> well, I, well, I mean, that's that's what, that's why I suspected the answer to this question was so that yeah, you give yeah. him you give him the ammo that he can then shoot you back oh. with. It. <laughs> Man, my cl there's a clerical oversight in the Evil Incorporated. Oh well. Um. All right. So that's fine. That's fine. So I should give this to to Evil Fanlin. This. this oh backup. shit. Is that what That's you, why I also expected this was gonna happen. <laughs> Give it a fastspiration. Oh, okay. You may have the fastspiration, Aragor, even though you didn't earn it. Now I want to know who Aragor's closest relative is, anyways. Uh, or, or I give it to Evil Thalen. <laughs> oh my God. Well, uh, I want to say his mother, but okay, I would. He met Umeg, so mm. yeah. Close. I mean, immediate. Were you, were you, you you felt an immediate closeness to Umegs after you met him? Yeah. You, you weren't like this asshole. He was gone my whole life. You just saw him and you were like, "Daddy." Oh. <clears throat> uh, all right. Well, sorry. We don't say "daddy" nowadays. You said "father." There we go. Yeah. You have to be so formal now, or you, it's somehow inferred as sexual. And depending on the person, I guess you can't even you can't even have a family anymore. Uh, the every every family term is being sexualized. All right, you may now have your faxpiration die. Uh, you may ask the same question of any NPC you met previously during your journey. Um, Star Singer. Star Singer. Oh my goodness, who was she closest to? Um. She was probably closest to her, uh, her mother, uh, who, before, you know, 
heading out to the uh, to the Fey Wild for true immortality. Uh, trained her to be both a druid and a leader, but also encouraged her uh, to go out into the world and sow her wild oats, uh, aka be an adventurer for a little while, see the world, uh, meet the other races, understand why we don't like them, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I live in an area with Amish people, and them Amish kids, man, when they come of age and they go off for their like one week long, like lose your mind, go fucking crazy. Uh, I assume it was like that, but maybe not as not as condensed. Um, but yeah, she uh, she always sort of walked the same path as her mother with an opportunity for you know for deviations, of course. Uh, but there was certainly uh, a desire there to carry on her mother's works in the world uh, of men, as it were, uh, which is to say, here in the prime. All right. Great. So, man, like it, like just evil ideas are just hatching in my head. Uh, I'm like, well, wait a minute. So, if they ask like a bad guy the question, does the bad guy have a faxpiration die for that session? Because technically, they answered a faxpiration. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a slippery slope. Slippery slope. My classic Strahd game. They've met Strahd, and so every question is about Strahd. Like, every time they do a fax version question, it's, there's no other answer. They only want to know about Strahd. So I've I've had to make up slash remember from books a lot of things about Strahd. Uh, I mean, it's something to think about. Something to think about. All it's right. always going to be meta history, but I guess people are just appealed by who they're going to be facing off in the near future. Well, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Like, it's a great, and I, I like the reversal of being able to ask the DM uh, about any NPC because it kind of puts the DM into uh, bullshitting mode, right? Which is good to get the session started with. Yeah. yeah. Unless you had ChatGPT write a full 64 page backstory for every NPC in the campaign, <laughs> or, or Orpheus. But I mean, you know, everyone else, maybe not. So, all right. I don't know if Orpheus has done that, but he, he, maybe. Maybe. The benefits of AI. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All right. So, with all of that settled, um, I assume you guys take, you know, you take that risk for morale. You assume that the army is not going to attack in the morning. And eventually, unless you want to make constitution saves and possibly lose your well-rested buff, you succumb to sleep or whatever passes for sleep for your character. Um which means that you would probably wake up around 10 in the morning um, at the earliest, because some of you, from what I understand, you were up hella late. Um, so, the sun uh, rises. Before it does, um, I have here in my notes some to-do list items, and... All right. Orion... Uh, in your dreams that night, you dream of slaughter, bloodshed, and the hunt. You are not Orion in these dreams, you are Gavin. And more so, you are the wielder of the bow of hatred. You hunt down your enemies mercilessly, you delight in their terror as you taunt them from the shadows, as you watch them writhe on the ground, dying from your poisons, as you collect their skulls and clean them and add them to your trophies. But at some point during this essentially non-stop montage of, of violence and hunting, you find yourself Orion again in that first skirmish where you were forced to take a life, where you were forced to shed the blood of an enemy where you were sickened by your own actions and by what the world needed from you and what the world was willing to take from you you remember leaving the party temporarily and just riding off on uh, Claude's back, tears streaming from your adorably large, juicy eyeballs. Um, because you didn't want to have to do that anymore. 
there had to be another way and realizing as you fled that that simply wasn't the case that someone would have to protect these lands your lands your family your home and so you turned around and you rode north to the to the bridge and you rejoined with your allies and you walked a path stoked in blood yours your allies your enemies but for a moment for a brief moment during this terrible dream you remember who you were when it all started and you wonder if you could ever be that mouse again or if everything that has happened has changed you so completely that that part of you is dead and when you wake up in the soft uh furry folds of uh claude and you kind of scurry your way to the surface for air as it were um you realize that you are here in this moment and that more blood will shed before the end. Oh boy. Mm. Um, okay. And you said it's like 10 o'clock in the morning? Mm. Um, at, the, at the at the earliest, I'm assuming, because it did sound like everybody, e even if they went to bed early, they sort of were roused by the merriment and um, kind of, you know, uh, were up and about sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I think he would wake up and head to the church to see if uh, uh, Miss Golden Brow is there. Okay, so the, the Cathedral of Paylor. Yep. Got it. Okay. And if she is there, hopefully not. He's not disturbing her. Um, but if she is there already, uh, we'd like to schedule a therapy session <laughs> Aww. to kind of regale that dream. And if she has any insight or advice for him, um, he will say that he understands that this coming conflict is going to be uh, very horrible, very violent. But it is something that must be done in order to protect the veil and if his if his psyche has to endure this then he will mm -hmm. um the main con uh con con condolence con consolation uh is it um hmm so <laughs> i'm sorry i'm struggling with words this morning the um the major point that she kind of makes to you as you express your concerns is that um, you've already picked up the bow. You've already sworn by its power. But if at the end of this, you would like to be released from its power, she, should she survive the war, would do whatever was necessary to free you from its grip. Here in this moment of clarity, is that what you would want? It would have to be later. I understand that. Well, sometimes as they say, you fight fire with fire, you fight monsters with monsters. If I must become a monster in order to protect my friends and my family, then I'll do it. Okay. Her face is pained uh, when you say that. And she says, um, Gavin would have moments of clarity like this as well, where he would swim to the surface of himself beyond the sea of hatred that had drowned him. And I would make him the same offer I made you. But never was the time right in his mind 
let it go. There would always be more to hunt and more to hate and more that needed protecting. I think I'm uh, for a few moments. Yeah. It is... Hmm. It seems that then this cycle will continue. I'll do my best to temper it, but... I think there's just too many things that are important in this world. To just let myself go back now. She nods to you, but you can sense a great and overwhelming sadness uh, from her towards you. Um, there is an instinct, possibly from the, the bow, to view this as pity. Uh, but you know that she is just uh, resigned to your decision. Yeah, he'll thank her. And uh, I guess he'll just ask to kind of sit in solitude until mm -hmm. the time arises for him to be wielded against the enemy. All right. She says, um, prepare yourself. It is the belief of all who have studied war that the attack will come either tonight or tomorrow morning as the sun rises. All right, so with those words, camera kind of, I guess, flies out the window of the uh, this private, you know, private room in the chapel, sweeps over the red roof city of Brindle to the rest of the party who is rousing and um, preparing for what comes next. And so I ask, with this day, possibly the last day, what do you guys do? To be clear, do we get a long rest? Yes, you guys did get the long rest, because even though it was rowdy, you guys slept in late, and it was also very morale boosting. Excellent. Yeah. It feels like you're waking up on the second day of the big convention you went to and you stayed up last night partying hard after lots of travel and you shouldn't have as much energy as you do um but you just the adrenaline is there of your your allies your cause um and, and everything else i think um, though we don't need to spend much time on it. Guy mm -hmm. would spend the morning going to harass or tear. Okay. Um, and his entire goal is to get Sir Tyrion to teach him new spells. All um, right. And when I say teach, he means get hit by some. Uh, all right. So, yeah, you find him. Um, he is running drills with any and all who are trained... Uh, or skilled with cantrips. Uh, basically, they are going to use cantrip magic as a form of like uh, elemental artillery, essentially. Um, he is not of the caliber and strength of Immerstall the Red, though he is still uh, a powerful mage in his own right. Um, and let's see. The spell that he currently has available that I don't know if you could learn them or not, but he has greater invisibility, ice storm, uh, cone of cold. Uh, you should already have the fireball. Uh, he's got fly. Uh, mostly at this point in the day, he's already sort of committed his list of spells um, for, you know, for, for the day. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So... Um, magic missile like he you know he's just kind of like taking the the mage uh loadout essentially like mm -hmm. to to make sure that he can kind of support on the battlefield um and provide some uh some damage support guy will take a whole ass cone of gold okay um, uh, if he's willing to provide 
All right. Um, to kind of hint at his actual retired uh, spellcaster level, he just has this one, uh, but he will go ahead and cast it. Uh, demonstrating to everyone else around, um, you know, what he, what this would look like. Uh, oof. Well, I mean, not oof for you, but oof damage-wise. Uh, it's actually good for you. So 28 points of cold damage uh, washes over you. Um, you take it like a champ with that 18 and take half of the 28. All right. And then he uses reaction to... Uh, absorb and copy, and it will get flown into his neck area. And bearing it with a grin, it is like a cold water bath after a long. Oh time. yeah. Okay. Uh, there are some applause and some gasps from the assembled uh, cantrip uh, battalion at your ability to take the hit, but also to absorb it. Uh, and so Tyrion uses this as a lesson to show that there are other types, uh, many types. In, possibly infinite types of uh, magics uh, out in the world, and that this ability to absorb a spell and learn it um, was practiced long ago, allegedly, in ancient times, uh, wherein certain, certain mages, wizards, essentially, studied the spell-like abilities of creatures and would go out and deliberately get hit with those to learn the spells that way um and he explains what a what a dangerous and uh somewhat foolish uh way to learn magic and you know that's why nobody practices that anymore um but that your ability is not wizard uh wizardly in nature it is a gift a talent that you have acquired uh and he urges the younger uh students here to not try this at home essentially <laughs> has a very and guys just like <laughs> nodding smiling using cool powers behind them <laughs> yeah 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 exactly that awesome. <laughs> yeah do not and... do not try to make your own radioactive spider to get bit by that's a bad idea uh yeah yeah kind of thing so um okay um stepping away from the uh the students sir Tiran says um it, uh, it grieved my heart you hear that you had passed. It grieved I, my neck to die. Just so. Just so. As a would-be once adventurer, I am no stranger to the revolving door of death. But I would ask at you, how are you feeling? That's an interesting question. I don't think anyone's asked me that. I feel strange. But I feel excited. It feels like everyone has set up, you know, thrown on what they can, and that the great grand finale will start soon. That is one beautiful and optimistic way to put it. But I would expect nothing less from you. Uh, guy will smile and hide the mask of an archmage behind him. Mm, mm. And, uh, we'll say, yes, well, we all have our, you know, part to play. And just a heads up, do, do be careful for the Elsa Cross mages. They might have an errant few cantrips. Mm. Yeah, I, I heard the report, uh... I've been keeping an eye on them. I have a few counter spells ready just in case. Some of them have a bit more talent than they're letting on. That's always the trick. But you should keep back to your studies. I'm mm. going to go use your cone of coal to kill people. Mm. And save the world. Well, a part of it, yes. Good sure. luck. Sure. Now, if you see a giant dragon battle, throw, throw, don't throw fire at it. Right. That'll be me riding on the back of a cool dragon, by the way. Mm. I doubt I will miss it. 
Uh, guy will give him a smile and uh, quickly saunter off, uh, giving away to all of the cantrip users. Uh, and he will, in fact, throw out a fire bolt himself towards whatever training dummy there is. Mm -hmm. And as he waves goodbye, I was always your greatest apprentice. Um, people uh, cheer and uh, they, they shout encouragement to you like background crowds in uh, animes do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as you uh, as you walk away from the scene. All right. Um, anyone else have any preparations this last day? When Guy returns, Barnabas would provide him with his newly upgraded armor, whatever he got from the quartermaster. All right. Fair enough. Uh, and when Guy finds each of you, uh, whether you're still sleeping or not, he will use telepathic bond. Okay. So we don't know that <laughs> this man's a rust monster, right? Oh, yeah. So Asha um, and uh, Tendal would uh, tr kind of track him down. And then you guys would uh, realize that, yes, something bad happened last night. Raijin got too, too, well, he got too dead. Um, but wanting to fix their mistake, uh, a, a druid apparently reincarnated him as, well, as that, um, a rust monster. You find him hungrily, uh, chowing down on, um, what seems like a discarded scrap, uh, near a, uh, kind of field or an open courtyard where they are building and uh, maintaining the machines of war. Uh, he would recognize you guys immediately. Um, and... Hmm. I don't think he can vocalize the problem. <laughs> he can talk, right? I mean, uh, he has lungs. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Um, it would be... Oh, why did you get so big all of a sudden, buddy? Oh, okay. Um, so as you, uh, kind of approach him, uh, he would look up at you and you would see kind of recognition in its movement, uh, and it would, uh, come running up to you guys and you hear sort of, sort of a, a hard croaking voice being forced through, um, vocal cords that aren't meant to make, uh, I guess vocalizations, uh, and it would say, <laughs> help! me oh no oh oh um okay okay uh, um we can fix this we can fix this right i mean asha tend to look around like they shrug you know what i have an idea that oh, uh, her oh gold, no. <laughs> that golden brown uh, woman. She brought that guy, right? If we kill you, she could probably bring you back. Mm, mm, As mm. something else? Anything would be better than this, it seems. Our poor boy. Wait, wait. Better yet. Um, Did we awaken it? He's a fully sentient. There's nothing to awaken, man. <laughs> Uh, uh, he, would, he would be awakened per se, but uh, he's having trouble vocalizing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be real. I don't know what magic can undo or at least help solve this situation. Kill him again. Start over. That's fucked up. <laughs> but it'd work, wouldn't it? <laughs> it might be our only recourse. I don't. I don't know what to do for this. I don't want to have to kill this. Ra Wait, does he have to? Well, you already did. did. Oh, I mean, I mean, he's already, already died and came back as this. So, I mean, that line's already been crossed. Oh, buddy. Um, you know what? You know what? I have an idea. I'm. I. Oh, this won't work either. Fuck. 
You know what? After the war is over, we'll find someone to undo this, okay? Okay. Uh, he nods, and he says, uh, Okay. Also, we kind of need you to stop eating the metal. We need that. But you can eat the red hands metal. There'll be plenty of that. Hey. For the time um, being, I'll give him a hobgoblin greatsword to chew on. Okay. Yeah. And you still do your diplomatic duties in that shape. He looks at you. He can't talk. His feelers, his feelers twitching, and he says, uh, "I try." Oh. Okay, okay, you know what? Never mind. Let's not tell anybody about this. You just stay where you are, and uh... no, we should tell someone about this because if they just find a random ass rust monster, they're gonna kill him. I mean, Very true. Isn't that? Don't we kind of want that? Uh, Ash, you Ash, 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 I mean, either we don't want him to do Ash, it. Ash, 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 no, 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 it's fine. We'll keep him with us. Um, I'll take him by the druids today, and I'll um, see what they can do about the uh, the speaking issues. Okay, good. Okay. You you do get right on that. Um, um, Rajin, uh, thank oh, you. Oh, um, boss, if they suggest uh, killing him and reincarnating him again, should we just... Um, should we let them do that, or...? I'm gonna be real with you. Anything is better than what he is right now, so... Ooh. Yeah. Alright, uh, alright, alright. That's a very loaded answer, my friend. <laughs> I'm, look, look, I don't know what's on, the, what's on that roll table. You I guys know. made this shit up. <laughs> I know, that's <laughs> what I'm probably saying. probably worse things. It is probably worse things. So this is close. <laughs> this is very close to the worst. Right now, we need something better, so yeah. Look, he might come back as ASMR. Just ask for consent before you kill him. Look, look, when he's not looking, that's when you do it. God damn. <laughs> uh... Imagine how frightened he would be knowing it's coming. Come on, man. People say I don't respect life. Mm. I'm a huge fan of life. All I'm right. also very practical. So the dwarves are going to head over for that. Um... Okay. There is also a um, a disturbance. The um, the guards and patrols that are supposed to be watching the tunnels beneath the city um, they rouse they they raise the alarm. Apparently, there is an incursion um, of enemy forces uh, tunneling into um, essentially the undercity of Brindle. Oh shit, what do they look like? Are they hot uh, goblins or They are the dwarves that you uh oh. befriended. No. False alarm. Tell them false, oh, false alarm. False alarm. False alarm. Alright. So with the arrival of the dwarves, um they kind of meet with everyone else to try and get a um a sense of where things are. are. Try to get caught up on that. Whew. Alright. Um the dwarves intention is to um guard the access to the uh undercity and also tunnel uh spend today and tonight tunneling beneath a lot of key locations that the enemy troops might be trying to approach under they want permission to essentially destabilize the lands surrounding the city but they are asking for permission because there's it's not easy to come back from that. Um, if they if they do this tunnel work uh, and they collapse some of these areas, that that won't be available for like building or farmland. Like the the ra the ground is going to become kind of unstable. I mean, but, if we lose, there won't be anything available. Period. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, is there anyone who would advise the Council of Brindle? to stop the dwarves from doing this or do you guys you guys like hey this is this is a good idea like it's better it's better to lose some land um and have to 
Uh, like, they could fix it, but they'd have to, like, use either magic or they'd have to bring in, like, a shitload of, like, you know, dirt and rocks and sediment to kind of, like, strengthen up. You know, it's like a sinkhole. They're ba yeah, basically making yeah. sinkholes and stuff. Yeah, so... Um, sounds like a great idea to me. Okay. Putting them on disadvantage disadvantageous footing. Yeah, or in some cases, just completely destroying... Yeah. Um, Swallowing you know, up a regiment. Yeah, a regiment, a war machine, uh, a battle tower. Mm. Yeah. While most of the dwarves will be doing that, um, there will be uh, griffin uh, riders that will assist in the skies. And that is the main contribution that they are offering, is essentially um, covering your undercarriage, as it were, and then um, destabilizing um, and possibly removing uh, certain troops and troop movements altogether with uh, some aerial support as well. All right. If everybody's okay with that, that is what the dwarves will focus on. I don't have any issue with that. Uh, like it was stated, um, <laughs> if there's no, if Brindle just completely falls, it won't fucking matter. <laughs> it, it really won't. At least, at least, at least it's fixable. If it wasn't fixable, yeah. maybe that'd be cause for a little bit of concern. But if it's at least fixable, it'll just take some time. Well, that's yeah. time for the land to heal. So, you know what? If Brindle's too beat up after this, we can just make Denivar the new capital. Mm. Oh God. Mm, nah, nah. You can and have, you don't you like can Denivar. Have, you can have that conversation with Lord Jarath. <laughs> also, I thought you didn't like Denivar. I mean, uh, sure. Can you hear us? He's, uh, he's been having his problems since like ten minutes ago, I believe. Oh my, man, yeah, yeah. My issues with the gnomes are separate from my love of my homeland. You know, if I was, if I thought it was worth it, I could go back to a recording and hear you say "fuck Denivar." <laughs> probably, I've probably said that once or twice. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a temp channel real quick, a temp voice channel to see if uh, Zved could join that one. I don't know what's going on with him. It does look weird. Yeah. All right. Hold on. I can connect. Yeah. Yeah. This was fine. I mean, it's fine for all of us. I yeah. think it has to be his account. Can you hear us? You are muted. Did his role get removed? Same issue. Yeah. Same. Hmm. That's so weird. So he can join a lobby that doesn't have people in it. Okay. Well, he's in the Red Hand group, so he should be able to to join. Same issue. Uh, mm. I guess I'll. Uh, su I guess suggest. What if we moved into like one of the video, video game, game chats? Ones? Yeah, and see. If yeah, we could try that real quick. All right, let's see. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Hey, how you doing? Video games. Okay. We forget to tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm telling. If he can't join this one, being a public thing, it's gonna. It's really coming down to something with his. Yeah, it's gotta be on his end. All right, there we go. Hey, what the fuck? Right. Why not, can you? Did you, you? You're coming in a little, little garbled, but I could hear you at least. That's so weird because everything is fine on every other server. I hear him loud. Yeah, I'm hearing him good now. Whoa! Why um, did you? Did you? Did your computer go through any updates recently? I just did it just now because I was having that issue. So I said, okay, well, I'll just update it and see if that fixes it. But no, it's just that channel. Like I could join secret chat just fine. I could join my Discord server just fine. Well, it's just weird because you're still in the Red Hand of Doom group. Yeah. So you should be able changed. to join that. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I have no idea. It, it just keeps going from like connecting disconnected to RTC, connecting no route. Hmm. Just just on that server. It's so strange to me. I don't know. Oh. Well, I guess we'll play here for, for now. Let me go grab the uh the music. Yeah, my apologies. I don't know. I, I don't know how to All fix right. that issue. All right. So continuing uh where we left off. Uh I'm sorry to, to interrupt you guys. Um so you guys were the dwarves were here and you guys were discussing uh we're gonna let him cave in the uh battlefield yes 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 so all right then they are okay with that and that will be what they what they do all right huh so dwarves have arrived you can check that off the list um let's the... Were the lizard folk already here, or lizard folk are, um arrived yesterday, and they are in the rivers north of town. Cool. Do you guys want to switch to the map of the city? Yeah, that yeah, I think we can do that. Did okay. uh, the furbolgs pull back into the city, or are they still out? Uh, no, they are going to stay out in the field. Not the literal field, but you know the f right. the, f the field of battle. Okay, as everybody able to see here? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So let's see. I mean, I don't think there's much else we can do today other than wait. And try to do antagonize. We, is there other people we can uh, let know of our plan with the uh, bait and switch? All right, so let's see. We'll get Osric out here. I think all but, the leadership know, and I think that's all that that probably needs yeah. to know about it. Yeah. Um, because I just want to make sure we're not leaving any stone unturned, or we don't tell somebody, you know? Yeah. Right. So oh. leadership of Brindle. Uh, I guess the consensus was that we will be spreading out the clerics across the city, but have Tredora and just like less than a handful at the church. And then soldiers dress up as clerics so in case the red hand make a play for for them uh they'll at least have you know some protection and all of our healing won't just be concentrated meanwhile we have to go face the bithriax and yeah and honestly i i feel like if the red hand know that that is an optional target that for them to go for i feel like they're gonna go for it like I hope oh, so. You guys also can write and label all over this map. Like you you're totally welcome to do so. Uh where exactly is the cathedral? I think is it here or was it uh, yeah, there, are, there, are, 17. 17. there are two cathedrals, uh but seventeen is the is the big fancy one. Okay, so we'll more than likely stash. Twenty one is the is the Temple of the Raven Queen. This well, is we... this is where if you hadn't recruit uh you know recruited slash taken the ghost sword out of the game all like just an army of undead would have popped out of the graveyard here and just, uh started killing you from the inside. So I was gonna say that is that where like the main cemetery for the city is. Mm hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> that would have sucked. Yep, and you know below ground um catacombs. Catacombs. Yep. Uh, well, so uh, is our only plan today to try to lure out a Bithyrax and fight him? Yes. Yeah, let's do it. So you're trying to lure him out before the battle starts or just come up with a plan to lure him out during the battle? I think we have the plan, but I don't know. Hmm. Because a bit we, we assume a Bithyrax is prideful, so we we're trying to bait him out. Hopefully before well, the battle officially started. You assume he's prideful, yet he was disciplined enough to to, run. to leave yeah. the battle when he uh when he needed to. Yeah. Oh, you're, again, you're right. You're right. Again, again, the the red hand for the most part, even the um, even the goblin that you guys um you know Sarveth. yeah Sarveth that you guys were able to uh, kind of capture and everything else like that. I mean, the guy still. For the most part, uh, was more disciplined than than most goblins you'd ever you'd ever meet. Like the they, this is a, 
if there were nine alignments. This is a lawful evil force. Like they they value um, discipline and on the matter of pride, right? Pride is a very cultural thing. So it would be perhaps pride, you know, he would be full of pride for being disciplined enough to withdraw when needed. Uh, a lot of times, uh, when you try to take advantage of uh, the emotions of an enemy, you have to understand that uh, emotions are a part of, uh, you know, your upbringing and your, and your culture. Like, some things matter more to some people, some things don't matter at all. Um, some things are going to, to hit hard, some things won't land at, at all. They have no meaning. So, um, there, there are some base core values, sure. But if you are a prideful person, what are you proud of, right? You're proud of the things that matter to you culturally. Yeah, um, you're right, you're right. Yeah. I don't know about anyone else, other than just, you know, our, our immediate plan right now. Um, after Orion's kind of done some meditation in the morning with uh, Golden Brow, he would like to try and do some immediate scouting of the forces that have come um to see what uh essentially what he can see that they're bringing to the table at this moment in time mm. um i mean that works like they did try to give you like uh like basically like a monster manual style report of mm -hmm. all the units that they were aware of but it sort of got buried in many other discussions so if you want to seek uh seek out members of the war council to get that uh today you certainly could yeah i think that's what orion would like that would probably be a safer alternative to getting the information since they've already had scouts go out and gather this information um if afterwards you guys feel like you just don't have enough information then you might consider going out and scouting on your own um, but I would say assembling everybody and assembling um, enough knowledgeable people to give you this stuff and then listening to it, it's going to take several hours from the day. Um, is it worth it to get that intel? I mean, that's my plan. I don't know what everyone else has in mind. I, um, Un after you. This might be entirely risky, but... Um... I might suggest using the Elsewhere Cross spies against them by leaking false information mm. about where uh, Golden Brow is and have Bithriax target those areas when the war starts. It's unlikely we'll get him out before the war starts, but... Yeah. If we can't... Well, kind Sorry. of in line with that, that's what I was kind of thinking of, you know, using that information leak out that all of our healing is in the, in the Temple of Paylor when we have our actual plans that they're kind of spread out. Yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, Layla, would you be interested in perhaps doing information gathering today? Uh, oh, wait, Layla's not here. Um, but they uh, could potentially use Legend Lore to uh, know more about Azar Cool, which is someone who we don't know much about. Mm -hmm. They could potentially use Scrying to locate either him, Rajar's patron, or the Sanguine King. Uh, they obviously might have protections on them, but knowing where they are and more about them would be beneficial. Ooh, I'd like to throw well, another one in there. General Karn. <laughs> I don't know if Azar Cool is uh, is around here, but I think Karn is right at the, at the front lines. May as well know about this dude if we're going to be seeing him real close, real quick. Would we be perhaps better off just going straight to Azar Cool and avoiding any unnecessary bloodshed if we can't lure Bithriax out? Should we be trying to take down the Sanguine King before he builds his strength? Well, we, again, we have, we don't know where they're at, so that's uh, a new point until then. And even if we could, I would still rather not leave Brendel with the for the, the forces at Brendel are massive, not as big as the Red Hands, but comparable. Nonetheless, if we leave Brindle without our intervention, they may yet still fall to the forces of Red Hand. With Karn and the Bithriats still in play. I would rather take those two out first, then prioritize as our cool. 
Yeah, like with the info it's... that we have so far, this is all just a, just helping whatever the fuck they're doing for the Stinkling King. I would say if we can eliminate the priority targets, like uh, Abithrax and then like, I don't know, the general, um, then Brindle can hopefully hold the rest of the army as a stalemate while we try and look for wherever the Sanguine King is. Yeah, like OOC, OOC, you guys have the resources available that you could skip the Battle of Brindle and just go and track down Azar Cool. But for all the reasons that you guys are stating, um, while it wouldn't impact you guys mechanically, uh, many people would die um if you if you left them without uh your essentially your your leadership your battle presence and your um significant uh abilities like we could probably yep. stop the sanguine king and all that stuff but then the army is still here they take over brindle and then they still have you know this seat of power within the veil and then we have to try and root that out and that's gonna be um also Four sessions, just saying. <laughs> we gotta do this. We can't just waste an hour just talking about it. We have to literally start. No, yeah. I mean, but yeah, two these battles are, these only take two sessions. Yeah, it's it's just you know, you just just kind of throwing out all your options to make sure you got everything covered. Mm. I'm just saying, I've seen the Odyssey. <laughs> two battle sessions. Oh man. I mean, it really depends on the battle. Also, you fought a Bithriax before, and it took like four hours and change. But you also fought him unprepared, not knowing anything about him. Um, and this time around, you do know what you're getting into, and you have a dragon to back you up. Um, so it's it's honestly incredible that you guys fought him to a standstill and forced a retreat. Like, really? I mean, but it really just came down to a battle of attrition. Um, because of how strong both sides were. I would probably say, at least this day, uh, info gathering, um, legend lore on either Azar Cool or, um, General Karn. I'd like to know about Karn, but I don't know what we stand to gain from it other than he is a general, and like I don't know what real information we're gonna get that's gonna benefit us. Uh, you know, I think Azar Cool might give us some insight on what we are expecting from this battle with the Sanguine King. Yeah, I mean it was just an option, just another. Yeah, option. no, totally. it's definitely an option, but I, I just think one is more valuable than the other. And I would, I would vote for uh, Azar Cool then. I'll go for Karn, because we're gonna fight him no matter what. Okay. I'm trying to find her feature with legend lore to see how many times per day she can do it. I think it's like once per day. Yeah, that's my understanding. Okay. Also, okay. I'm pretty once sure we, I'm pretty sure we tried doing this legend lore thing with Car before. Didn't work. I, I don't doubt think, we don't, don't we're gonna do it again. I don't think we did it on Car. We've before. never done that. Yeah, we did. We've used it no. on some other entities and it didn't work, but I don't think we've I mean you used it on the actual Sanguine King. Yeah. Yeah. We've used it on a number of people. I don't think it's ever not worked. The only That's time it, what it was, was. I remember now. It was, I think she was the trying mother. to, yeah, the mother. And then she got some, some info, but not the whole story. Right. But that's because she didn't describe have a, a person, place, or object. The spell brings to your mind a brief summary of the significant lore about the thing you named. The lore might consist of current tales, forgotten stories, or even secret lore that has been widely, has never been widely known. If the thing you named isn't of legendary importance, you gain no information. The more information you already have about the thing, the more precise and detailed the information you receive is. The information you learn is accurate, but might be couched in figurative language, uh, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I'm just reading this, and my brain is, I'm switching over to more of a Pathfinder 2 brain. My brain is like, if this was a Pathfinder spell, you would have to make, like, a check. And based on, like, how well you did on the check, you would receive different quality of information <laughs> i mean it's, um, it's just recall knowledge but without actually having yeah yeah it. yeah like super it's like a super recall knowledge yeah. essentially yeah yeah but like i don't know i appre i i appreciate that design more than just i cast a fifth level spell and i get all the information but um i will provide the information as i have thus far so i guess the question is who is today's legend lore and uh, we could resolve that very quickly with a poll yeah I mean, a fifth level uh, spell is nothing really to sneeze at, but yeah, I would, exactly. I, my vote would be 
uh, as our cool. I'm going for Karn. If we're going to fight him, best know what he can bring to the table. I I don't see Karn as an inevitability. We might fight him. It'd probably fun to fight him, but... He's the general of this entire army. He, we're going to fight him. All right. Well, the time to uh, sway other people's decisions is over. Just make a vote. All right, so you're doing SR cool. Okay. All right. So, should I change music for him? Let me see. Uh, mm. what, what do I got for this? Hold on. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think this should be okay. All right. So as Layla casts Legend Lore, um, her body begins to glow and shimmer with starlight. Her eyes go bright, and you can tell those of you who have been around her long enough, or those of you who have sort of witnessed this before, that she has left herself and is sort of traversing uh, time and memory and perhaps even the stars themselves. As she does, um, she happens upon a hag. Uh, the hag is um, beautiful, but also terrible. Um, not as ugly or as terrifying as you would expect, but like, almost like a beautiful elf but there's just something off about them um and that is that their skin is so pale that you can sort of see the blood pumping through the veins and arteries below the skin the eyes uh are all red and look uh hungrily at the world this creature uh is with child there is a cut to uh the creature giving birth and the child of her loins uh is a small red elf-like uh baby with a little blue nose and uh you recognize it as a hobgoblin child to her disappointment as her long black claws sever the umbilical cord uh there's a little wiener uh, unusual for a hag, if if not like, you know, a one in a thousand thing to have a male child. You can see on her face the contemplation. Does she devour the infant or does she let the infant live? And out of morbid curiosity, she does. And then it's hexborn youth. The offspring of an ancient blood hag is raised in the deepest darkest places of the Feywild and the Feydark in time he grows into a young man obsessed with murder and bloodshed and violence taught magic by his mother he finds comfort in the divine what starts as a warlock pack quickly turns into true devotion giving with no expectation of anything in return the being that he finds is the sanguine lord the blood king a great and terrible primordial of destruction and so he grows in the service of this being and his strength and his power calls to others and he reminds the half uh sorry he reminds the hobgoblins of the fey uh fey wild and the fey dark of their history 
of their true purpose, capital T, capital P, and many seeking the violence and the glory of the old ways uh, flock to his banner. A blood-stained handprint with sharp claws that promises power and glory and death and destruction and his forces grow and as his forces grow so too does his power uh he is a cleric of no small power uh with abilities similar to uh both a paladin and a hexblade sort of a weird combination of uh melee violence and raw uh, physical might and tempered divine strength he is attended uh by devils who serve his every whim and carry out his will and as he gains in strength and as he gains in power his god grants him the immortality of undeath and so then he adds vampirism to his portfolio of strength ageless and immortal he tirelessly spends centuries looking for a way to bring the sanguine king back into the world and he finds it in an al ally who disenfranchised broken the last of his people is willing to do anything for the taste of vengeance against those who took everything from him and together they begin to assemble the broken pieces of their previous lives and of a future of destruction and at that point uh as our cools kind of like pallid uh face sort of stares at uh, Layla his eyes red full of blood and a fanged smile uh, gleams from between his thin lips and Layla is back in her body And then she recounts to you what she has seen. Oh. Oh, anybody has any garlic? If he is a vampire, then the attack would likely come at night, would it not? Can he walk in sunlight? Uh, hmm. That was what Miss Goldenbrow had suggested today. I saw her this morning the red hand is probably just scouting us and then we'll be preparing to attack in the evening if not maybe early morning if he shows himself on the battlefield then maybe in the evening I doubt he would he has no reason to put himself into harm's way when he can command from the rear, the rear guard show up with the Sangu King the following night. Hmm. Do, do, I've heard of many vampires. Do vampires have actual weaknesses? I, I'm just curious. Um, I mean, you guys could do a religion check. Would be the... Hey, guys, the guy's gonna do that. Alright. All you. I don't assume Guy knows. <laughs> That's um, like... <laughs> I mean, if not, we could take this information to Golden Brown and see what she knows. Right. It's the only intelligence skill I don't have. 
Yeah, so you assume that they like blood. Okay. And have <laughs> blood powers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And bite, bitey fangs. Uh-huh. Uh, you rolled very bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, right. yeah. We're all Look. just looking at hanging on the edge of his words, hoping for something. Um, uh, and the gobbler. They go oh, there. They, have a, they have a propensity for counting. I, I I wouldn't say that, but I I think that we should probably talk to Golden Brad. Though I think I got a very clear and thorough um, evaluation of this enemy. Hmm. Uh, well, as I say, second opinion. Okay, vampirism is a good path to immortality. All right, so you're going to hit up Golden Brow for information on vampires. Okay. She says, is there reason to believe that we are dealing with vampires on top of everything else? Oh, their uh, clerical leader is a um, vampire. Yeah, uh, yeah. we had uh, Miss Layla here. Uh, she has an ability to read the stars, and uh, she read them on this as our cool individual and that's what she got back fascinating we've been unable to divine any information about him have you yeah. she mages? turns to Layla and says uh, you must truly possess spear skills far beyond a normal spellcaster to gain and glean such insight and she uh, she actually bows in uh, acknowledgments of how strong Layla is. Well, she's not an oracle for nothing. Okay. She I, says I, uh, the vampire um, aspect would make sense since they seem to be a very blood-centric organization. Uh, vampires have the ability to drain the life force of others and bolster themselves. Most typically, this is done through feeding via their fangs, but there are variations of the type who can draw out the life force through their weapon attacks, their spells, or even their very presence. Um, there are also some that are psychic vampires. They do not drain blood, uh, but they take your life force uh, by essentially attacking and taxing your mind. They, for the most part, cannot be out during the day and are fearful of daylight. They regenerate from wounds swiftly, and only the application of radiant damage can slow that process. Some strains of vampires find themselves... Uh, affected uh, by garlic of all things though particularly strong uh, vampires or different strains of vampires are not affected one way or the other the same holds true for the presentation of holy symbols of deities known to favor the sun the light uh, or the destruction of undead So, for all intents and purposes, this individual sounds like your favorite foe. If you were mm -hmm. a ranger. They would want you dead because you could face this man. Yeah. Ah, I see. As the High Priestess of Pelor, God of the Sun, mm -hmm. and who is opposed to the existence of undead, then yes, it would make sense that the Temple of Pelor and myself would be their prime targets during this attack. Well, Pelor is light. And Guy does a sun star symbol with his hand. <laughs> oh man, she yeah, she does it back to you with a big smile on her face. Uh has blessed me once and many times before. I must say, do you have a method of you know channeling 
or a spell that could channel Paylor's light. Yes, it's real sunlight. Oh, yes, d d daylight. Hmm. Are you? Daylight is. Um, I'm assuming it would shine on me. <laughs> <laughs> I, what I what I mean is something that would burn. I, I can't um, I, I can't absorb something that unless it hurts. Ah. Or okay. um, affects my mind. Yeah. Uh, she gets a wry smile on her face. She says, "Are you capable of casting the fifth circle of magic?" Uh, I am. I am. I today I I learned from Sir Tyrion a very powerful spell of that caliber. Hmm. Well, I could call down Paylor's righteous fury upon you to teach you one of the most powerful spells of the fifth age of magic. Nay, any age of magic. Oh. The spell is Flame Strike. Powerful magic. Mm. I would, I mean, I would be able to see it. Uh, you would, because it would create a cylinder of flame that would burn you with righteousness. Oh. Is it fire or light? Both, she says enthusiastically. A big fan of the flame strike spell. Oh, thank goodness. We all have our flaws. Okay. We all oh, she's flaws. adorable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. He didn't play like, no, the like light cleric, uh, which, you know, I think light cleric actually gets fireball. Um, yes, I just got yeah. the Rhyme of the Frost made. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you Yeah. Hmm. And yeah, Daylight she, Spell. Yeah, she went She went life. You know what I'm saying? So. I can't... Hmm. So you have Daylight. Mm hmm. And then you have this. Mm hmm. Flame Strike. She says reverently. Does Flame Strike... Is that Daylight? No, but it causes the radiant damage. It, it burns them and sears them with the power of the sun. Hmm. That is potent, but I <laughs> think we need daylight against uh, this vampire. Wait, hold on. She may have a point. I really oh. want to see you get burned. I mean, sure. If you want to throw, I can. If you want to toss a three flick, I mean, I could see how it works. So would a daylight be learnable by mere magic? Because it creates its own thing, and it's just shedding light on the whole world. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, like, directly target anything in particular. Uh, yeah, I just mean the spell's effect. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I I do not want to to be metagamey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to seek out certain spells from certain lists, because I'm just I mean, curious what she has. I mean, she definitely, as a High Priestess of Valor would recommend you take Daylight if you're going to fight yeah. vampires. Yeah. My my uh, my initial was that I wasn't sure if a priest keep, keep it Valor. Keep in mind, though. Keep in mind. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, wherever the point is, if somebody puts a bowl over it, <laughs> it's going to go out. Well, so. I, I when I was thinking yeah. of it, my thought was Dawn, like the big pale or light cylinder, mm -hmm. massive, huge thing. That oh, goes that on. spell. Um, because that is radiant damage and sunlight. But if Guy has no idea it exists, then he has right, no right, right. idea it exists. So I, he's really, I'm willing to take either daylight or flame strike if that mm -hmm. one is not one that she holds on to. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, let's see. Because that is the most pale or ass spell I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, this, yeah, the one from Dawn. Xanathar's. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, let's see, this is a, each creature must be a con save, uh, half as much, uh, and then it's concentration to keep it. So it's like a big dick, uh, moon. Correct. Was, it, it's yeah, moon it's sun, sunlight. Yeah. Moonbeam. Um, okay. Okay. So it's like the sun version of moonbeam, like a bigger version of moonbeam. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, that's sure. like a cylinder, whereas moonbeam's like a kamehameha. No, Moonbeam lingers on the field. Yeah, it's a cylinder, too. Kind yeah, of. it's a cylinder that you move around the battlefield. Right, like, no, but I'm saying, like, uh, I think Sunbeam comes from, like, the druid that's casting it and goes, like, straight. Like, oh, oh you're talking about Sunbeam. Yeah, oh, no, no, versus yeah. Dawn, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I think um, Layla can learn that at this level. 
Oh. It's on beam. I think it's a six level spell. Yeah, it's a six, six level or... spell. Yeah. She may want to prep that. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. I mean, she can cast Dawn on you if that's what you like. Perfect. I just didn't know what Paylor. I don't know like clerics. I don't know what they have. So. Um, I'll be honest. Um, I don't play like as a player D and D very often, and when I do, I'm super lazy. So I just play rogue barbarians because <laughs> totally. I because I like having good action economy and not failing my rolls. Um, and also, I feel like 5e magic is bullshit. So, like, I honestly, it it's, until this time, the last time I saw the Dawn spell is when I read the Xanathar's Guide when it came out. So, oh, uh, well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, so, uh, sure. Yeah, if you, uh, if you kind of pull on that, absolutely. Yep. She does not have it memorized, uh, simply because she didn't think that there were any vampires, question mark, in the en enemy forces. Yeah. Um, she would have to re- uh redo her spells sure so, that's um, uh, yeah, he'll yeah. say in that case until you focus on pillars like to create this f strike of dawnish light this is mm -hmm. daylight and a flame strike i'll take flame strike okay uh, ready to clear away she hits you with the most powerful spell in the fifth age of magic for 14 radiant and 15 fire. Mm. Is there a save? Uh, yes, there is for half. A deck save, no less. A deck save? Fuck. All right. he, takes, he wants to feel it in stride. Okay. <laughs> How much um, is it? <laughs> 14 fire and 15 radiant. As you feel the spell wash over you, um, as a student of magic and a creature of magic guy, you know that this is not one of the strongest spells in any age of magic. This is garbage. Um, I mean, everyone's allowed to have their favorite spell, but damn, it ain't good. Um, so that would probably lead to you asking, um, is there anything stronger? And then she would come back to you with, there is a spell that summons down the, the, the power of the sun, blah, blah, blah. And that would lead to her having Dawn and get us out of the a conundrum of metagaming. Correct. Little... All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, what what guy would say? I mean, I think how it goes is like guy is like hit by her and then looks around for like the flame strike. Yeah. But it never like to dodge, but he just doesn't dodge the main one. He's... Fair, <laughs> fair. All right. As we watch this display, it just jogs my memory a little bit. I ask her if she can clarify just briefly. Was it not true that Bradley Flameheart uh, sought the path of vampirism? Mm. He was he was a companion of yours, was he not? He was. And he has been put to rest. But his remains lie in a tomb to the north, protected by his many faithful. Was there any special thing that you guys used to put him down as a powerful vampire? Why would we put down our own ally? Oh, I apologize. The the implication that you just said uh, he was put to rest. Uh, I thought you meant you had to take him out. I, I misjudged that. No, he killed himself. Oh. He uh. sat on the mountaintop and let the sun destroy him. For he had come to hate what he, he was. Damn. Damn. Many who seek a shortcut to power do not last. For a flame that burns too hot quickly consumes its fuel. Oof. Oof. Barnabas shifts uncomfortably at this statement. <laughs> oh, Ryan shifts uncomfortably at this statement based on what was out talked about this morning. Oof. No, keep saying more. I must hear about this. <laughs> Does anyone have a band aid? We haven't even gotten in a fight today, and you take it so much damage. I mean, if they're coming in, well. Mm. Actually, that's a good idea. Let me let me take a let me take a little little, little break, if that's all right. So, do we do we have a plan? Yeah, we have a I mean, plan. Bait up the three acts. Did you want the to spend the rest of the afternoon? 
getting updated on troop specifics, or do you have something else you'd rather do? I can think of nothing else at this point in time. I think because okay. as you're fast traveling around the city, like I mean, time is passing. I'm not I'm not religiously changing it in game, but I am marking on what we call in the olden times pen and paper uh, the activities you're doing and the time that it's taking. But I'll go ahead and catch your clock up. Do we um do we know anyone who could know where this ritual's happening? By chance, I could sending them, or we have any updates? A ritual? Uh, the Sango King ritual? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, Miss Goldenbrow just said that all of their divination attempts to find Azar Cool have failed, and I assume they're at wherever this ritual is taking place. Mm hmm. Um, what about mean, Radriar? Sure. Did you hear anything from Radirix? He said that they likely move him around constantly. So, on top of the scrying not working, leads me to believe that there's some form of magic they're using to hide themselves. Meta, this guy's a cleric, right? Ah, uh, yes. Meta as a cleric, he has some of the best you-can't-find-me-go-away spells. In, in yeah, the... he could just be yeah. doing non-detection, and then he could even potentially just uh, be resting in, like, a magnificent mansion to hide from the sun yeah. and uh, be unscribable. I, I think the cleric version is uh, Temple of the Gods or something like that. Yeah, that which thing. Does, which does Temple of the like. Gods, like, Forbidden. They have the best defensive on, spells. Yeah, yeah. Unhallowed. Uh, you know, yeah, like, there's just a lot of so our yeah I, I don't know we would have to try and find someone high up enough who would have that information. the rank and file troops aren't gonna have our magical means yeah. don't seem to be working we probably should have asked Jarrett she seemed to have a good insight into their movements I think it was something that, I think it was something that she was working on but she just didn't have an answer for us right now So. Well, let's focus on the here and now and stop worrying over a future problem we may or may not live to see. Okay, everybody? So, just to get things moving, I vote we just continue shoring up defenses for right now until. Yeah, getting you know, those the down low on all the units. Yeah, and wait until the red hand makes their move. Okay. So, you want the. You want troop information and just gonna settle in for battle. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. I think okay. that's the most valuable things we can do with the time we have left. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me run you guys through it. I'm gonna take you back to the role play scene for this. <sighs> okay. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so they'll run you through it. Um, you are familiar with red caps. Yay? Nay? Um, Intimately. Yeah. yeah. They, ha well. uh, they have smaller uh, ones that you may or may not have encountered called bantlings. Um, they appear in great numbers, uh, and they have caused many issues along um the roads and uh trails and whatnot and smaller communities um they're also frequently led by jesus things are more terrifying than the red caps uh what they call gang bosses um these are older uh red caps that have seen much battle they are even stronger um some would say even stronger than a hill giant despite their compact size and then of course there are the red cap stalkers uh which are red caps who specialize in um hunting and assassinating prey instead of brutally facing them head on um to get around the veil quickly they ride around on giant weasels um these are blood drinking weasels 
uh, they have hollow fangs. They latch on and they drain the blood of their victims and they curl around them much like a snake. So if Ricky Tiki Tavi was a vampire and had babies, that's what his uh, his offspring would be like. Um, so that's the uh, the red caps. Uh, things that they have kind of learned about the red caps is um, overall they're very weak at range. And uh, let's see, the uh, the gang bosses in their long tenure of fighting and killing um, are they have something called the Eldritch Sling, uh, where basically uh, they use sort of fey magic to sort of launch um, long distance attacks. Um, they hurt quite a bit and can daze uh, targets that they hit with them. Um, all of them can soak their caps in the as a reaction in the blood of recently uh, slain creatures uh, or creatures that have dropped to zero, um, and they gain uh, mechanically uh, five uh, temp HP per max hit die of the creature that they soak the caps in. So these guys can go the distance uh, and last a long time in a fight despite their relatively low defensive properties. Um, their their blood magic essentially kind of keeps them going. All right, any questions about red caps? No, I hate they? it already. Okay. Um, they anticipate that there will be squads of red caps, especially um, huge numbers of bantlings that are let loose into the city. Um, they think that perhaps these creatures will try to get in through the sewers of the city. Uh, for the most part. All which right. Which blocked off. Uh, right, which you guys have blocked off, and there are dwarf, dwarven tunnel tunnel fighters down there, um, and, and all that good stuff. All right. Uh, let's see. You guys are familiar with Blood Hawks? This is what they use to send and retrieve messages. This is sort of their Game of Thrones Raven system. Um, let's see. I'm just going to kind of run down the list here. Uh, you have faced off against a Blood Priest before. Uh, the Blood Priest are essentially uh, cleric paladins. Um, and they have all the normal abilities of a Hobgoblin, including Coordinated Strike, Fortune of Many, um, Fey Ancestry, Martial Advantage, uh, all of that good stuff. Um, but they also have, um, advantage to saving throws against divine, uh, spells, which I guess hasn't really come up, uh, too much. Um, but they are resistant to the divine magic of others because such is their strong belief in the Sanguine King. Um, they can also re-roll spell damage. So if one of these people gets close enough to you to drop a fat inflict wounds on you, that's going to be real bad. Um, in melee, they seem to favor uh, a hold person into a um, into a upcast inflict wounds, wherein they manipulate the damage to essentially try and one-shot targets. Um, from a distance... Uh, they favor uh, Melf's Minute Meteors combined with Spiritual Weapon to kind of uh, get that range attack going, which you guys have witnessed in battle as well. Um, all right. So then you've got... Uh, you got some Gerblins. Uh, you got Gerblin Fleetfoots. Uh, these appear in great numbers. Uh, they are minion units. And their big claim to fame is that um, the more of them there are, um, they do sort of like little damage to you um, just by being close. So basically like a hundred cuts kind of thing. Um, they also uh, have something called slowing shot, where if a group of these guys rains arrows down upon an area, um, target struck will have their speed uh, reduced potentially uh, to as low as five, but they cannot reduce your speed to zero. But they are very good at slowing down, approaching uh, enemies from a distance. Um, 
they do try to stay at range, these Goblin Fleetfoots. Um, and they have a reaction called Skirmisher, which allows them to move away from targets to get close to them. Um, and then they have Nimble Escape as well, like all Goblins do. All right. Then you got a slightly tougher version of them, which is the Skirmisher. You guys have fought these guys before. Their main claim to fame is that they are mounted combatants. So they are very skilled riders of wargs. And again, you guys are well aware of these things by now. Um, amongst the goblins, they do have some that rise in the ranks and they are uh, war leaders. Uh, these guys have the ability to redirect incoming attacks, uh, bolster their allies in the same manner as a knight. So basically a non-magical blessing. Uh, to their allies um they are also mounted combatants but they have a very uh diverse uh action economy um instead of just the normal uh nimble escape they have cunning action so i, I believe that gives them a dash on top of the uh disengage and the hide actions all right um let's see you guys are familiar with the yeth hounds if the attack does come at night or uh if the day is overcast like tomorrow will be there is a chance that they will have these creatures um out on the battlefield um they are banished by sunlight not damaged but banished by sunlight um so it's unlikely unless the attack comes at night that they would risk these guys out in the field during the day um, more likely than not, they are being used to guard camps and uh, troops and, and troop movement and stuff at night. They might be sent into the tunnels. Um, they do have some very supernatural-esque abilities. And if they can f uh, find their way into the tunnels and then get into key locations where people above the tunnels could hear their horrible uh, baying, that could cause frightened uh status to a lot of your troops and kind of wreck morale so that's kind of what they think they're going to do with the yeth hounds if the attack happens during the day if the attack happens at night that's going to really suck because these guys are just going to be floating around howling you know scaring people ruining morale that sort of thing uh you got the bugbears uh these boys are experts at stealth um their main thing is scouting and things like that um unknown if they will be used in the battle or if they will essentially be prowling the edges of the battlefield to kill um those who are trying to flee or um if they're going to essentially be gathering intel during the fighting these are their fur bulbs, essentially uh, so while your fur bulgs are out scouting and running supply lines and things like that, uh, that's pretty much what these uh, Ghostwalker uh, tribe bugbears are doing. Uh, let's see. Blood witches. Different from the priestesses, the blood witches are capable uh, of all sorts of nasty um, sort of blood magics a lot of similarities with a warlock in that regard and most frightening is their ability to summon and control blood elementals which you guys have faced before um reports state that blood elementals the more blood they're able to absorb on the battlefield the bigger they can get there is a battlefield testament um, during the attack on Talar that one such blood elemental fed so heavily that it was the size of the inn. So if these creatures are given the chance to, uh, to kill and absorb and grow, they will become a very big issue. Um, they are uh, vulnerable to cold and poison. Uh, let's see. Um, then we've got uh, Devastators. Uh, they have delineated the Devastators into two ranks. Uh, Devastators and Grand Devastators. Uh, Devastators, no spells up to the um, third circle of magic. And Grand Devastators, 
are said to know spells all the way up to the sixth uh, circle of magic. Uh, generally, they will use those fifth level slots for wall spells and the sixth level spot for disintegrates. Uh, so keep that in mind. All right, uh, let's see. Then you've got Iron Shadows. These are essentially their rogue monk ninjas. You guys have encountered these guys before. They have, uh, let's see, their general rank and file officers. And these guys, their big claim to fame is their leadership ability. Um, so they're basically just slightly stronger soldiers who have um, leadership ability, essentially. But they have all the same things that a normal hobgoblin would have. Uh, sharpshooters. You guys are well aware of the potential danger of these uh, these creatures. At their um, at your current level, only nat twenties are going to be much of a threat uh, from these guys. But what a nat twenty it would be um, when you add in martial advantage um, and all of their other uh, abilities. Now against high profile, lower level targets, uh, these sharpshooters could be a very real problem. Um, on the battlefield. All right. Uh, we've talked about the soldiers. Uh, essentially, you guys have fought tons of these guys. They have manageable HP, a decent armor class uh, for their level, but at higher levels, um, their 18 armor class is quite manageable. Um, but... Just like all hobgoblins, even the lowliest of hobgoblins has coordinated strike, fortune of many, and all of that. Now, for the first time ever, you are seeing the rank and file rabble of their army, and that is the they're called they're calling them marines. And essentially these are minions, and their gimmick is that they have a uh, martial advantage once per turn, um, the hobgoblin can deal extra damage equal to the number of hobgoblins adjacent to the target up to uh plus eight damage so they will swarm you and then they will do a group attack and then if that group attack hits in addition to doing an ass load of damage it will do potentially up to eight more damage on top of that which ain't bad for minions um they also use um bow and greatsword like the uh the soldiers and so they are capable from range and from a distance um how these guys work is they try to get into squads of five when they're in squads of five uh they make an attack but then that attack has a plus five to hit and does times five damage so uh getting caught out by these guys could be um would be deadly um but you get again you guys are at a level where it's it's probably manageable the most damage you could do is if there were eight of these guys around you and they managed to hit they would do 23 points of damage static uh 23 points of damage but again there's going to be hundreds of them um because this is their this is their rank and file uh these guys right here uh war singers which you guys have encountered before, essentially a uh, a war bard. A, they have bard abilities. They can inspire their allies. They have something called an inspiring aura, um, which when they kick on this, and you haven't seen this in play yet, when they kick on the inspiring aura, uh, it's a 60-foot aura, and they could use a reaction on their, uh, to grant, um, sorry, allies within 60 feet can use the reaction to get five temp HP. So, in a war situation, these guys start their inspiring aura, and um, you, you've got people lasting quite a long time. Um, now, keep in mind, hobgoblins have a lot of things they could use their reaction on. Goblins have a lot of things they could use their reaction on. But if they need a little bit more staying power, this is something that the soldiers of Brindle don't have. So if it came down to a battle of attrition, um, these war singers are going to keep their troops fighting longer. And they can provide healing on the battlefield as well. Um, so if key personnel drop, they will be there with healing words to prop them back up. All right. 
And then, let's see, the last unit that you haven't encountered yet is the Mind Benders. All right. So, uh, the Mind Benders practice a magic called Psionic. Uh, and essentially, in the Fifth Age of Magic, it's just magic with a different flavor. Um, but they have the ability to dominate um, their enemies and then use them against uh, their allies. Uh, so they're going to be bringing all the dominates to the table. They can also directly affect your uh, your mind with psychic, uh, psychic spells and effects. Um, if they run out of juice, they will just start mind slivering everyone on the battlefield, which will hurt their saves against their allies' spells and abilities. Um, they also have something called a distracting aura. Um, within 30 feet, all of their enemies have disadvantage to attack rolls and saving throws. So they sort of create like a discordance around them that will... Um, make it difficult for their enemies to fight um and then finally there is uh they have something called a soul blade which is apparently a weapon made of psychic energy that they use in melee so they generally use cantrip from a distance or spell you know spell from a distance and then in melee they bust out these uh soul blades and that's uh that's what they've got uh in their force war machine wise they uh are bringing all the standard stuff plus hill giants which you guys are pretty well aware of hill giants um in a crowded battlefield scenario hill giants are going to be a liability for both sides um because when they die they fall down and smoosh people so generally they're going to be accompanied by goblins for the most part because goblins have better dexterity and are quicker and may be able to stay away from the giants so they don't get smoosh. Um, more expendable. Yeah, but they are essentially living and they're very expendable. Uh, they are essentially the living war machines of their forces are these hill giants and you guys have encountered their might and their strength before. Um, these have been trained up. Uh, they are effectively siege weapons. They will do double damage to structures and all of that. They have also been well fed, um, as normally one of the weaknesses of a hill giant is their ravenous hunger. Um, so kind of watch out for that. There is, they anticipate that these guys are going to just be set up within a uh, boulder flinging range. And they're just going to throw um, huge boulders at the city. Um, the furthest these guys can throw is 240 feet. So they are going to have to get pretty close to the walls uh, to make this happen. So long bows and siege weapons will be able to hit the giants. Um, it is likely then that uh, to kind of counter those effects, they will be having their war wizards, their devastators throw up walls to um, strategically protect the giants who are throwing rocks. Mm. Um, let's see. Aerial troops, they mostly like to ride around on wyverns. You know that the wyvern uh, tail sting is particularly nasty. The poison of the tail does 76 poison damage. Um, if it is possible, you might want to take Trador Goldenbrow up on a hero's feet. Uh, though it takes an hour to eat, so they're not sure when the best time to partake of the feast will be. Should they do it at sunset so that it lasts until the next sunset uh, in case they attack at night? Or should they wait and see if the attack comes in the morning? They're leaning towards uh, like a sunset dinner kind of thing to give you, what, 24 hours of Heroes Feast to try to offset some of the poisonous abilities that you might be dealing with. Now... You have managed to remove uh, from the battlefield their, um, their, their mutated uh, lizard folk and also their uh, bone drinkers. So you don't need to worry about those units coming into play. If you had not gone to those places, those units would also be added to the mix. Uh, and because Abithriac still lives, uh, there are still lots of manticores. 
that will be providing not just aerial, but also aerial artillery as they fire tail spikes from on high. And they have a pretty decent range on those tail spikes as well. So they're going to be flying overhead, sort of raining tail spikes down on people. They have an ability called Spike Volley, where they could do an AoE uh, 15 foot radius within 100 feet. Uh, and it just rains down tail spikes on every target in the area. So that is what they are bringing to the table. Any questions? Did we ever get an update on the status of the tattoos? On the status of the tattoos? Yes. Uh, they have been working diligently this whole time. Uh, they can provide those to you guys. It will take the rest of the day um, to do so. If you want to, to do it, they can provide it for you. Um, what it does is... I'm grabbing it right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So the tattoo will require uh, an attunement slot, but if you take it, um, it will provide uh, the following benefits. Uh, you gain resistance to uh, psychic damage, uh, and you get uh, advantage to saves against mind-affecting uh, spells and effects. Um... If I'm not mistaken, it's similar to what uh, Little Tony's ability is as a B-team member. Correct. Wait. Does his only protect one person? Or... There's a double. It's like if one person gets complete protection or the whole group gets, I think, just the advantage on saves. I don't know if the psychic damage was part of that. I'm going to try to find it right now. So, for the rest of the day, we get the tattoos, we get the hero face going. Yeah. And then. Oh, sorry. Oh. And also non detection. Um, oh. Also is good. part of that. So, I don't know what people's attunement slot situation is. Um, if they don't have a slot available, they'll probably take Tony's thing. Yeah. I, I have, have. I have one slot available, so Same. I can definitely use a tattoo. I have no magical items. Okay, so we're getting this guy. We're getting guy tattoo. Um, I have all three of my slots taken right now, but I'll see if I can move some stuff around. I don't know. I mean, do you still need the ring of jumping at that point? Uh, it's the ring of featherfall. Yeah, it's the ring of featherfall. But uh, oh, the, no, for this, yeah, the guy who dragoons, yeah, probably want to keep that. Yeah, I'm sure they are, but the slippers of spider climbing, those are attunement. Yes, yeah, I. I only say that because I know in Celasta they're not, but I'm not. Sh I'm sure that's not a good representation. Yeah, they're attunement. Okay. After the recent patch, fucking everything's attunement in Celasta. <laughs> oh. I think they made me yeah. attuned to an apple before I was allowed to eat it. Like, Still have a one gone. magic missile. So I have the yeah. weapon, the slippers, and the ring. So I don't think I can afford to. I just have now, to use with with these tattoos, you can unattuned to them if you need to to attune to something else you keep the tattoo on your body it just doesn't you don't gain the benefits of it so it's not like you're locking this uh, slot in for the rest of your life all right i mean might as well get them yeah and if you don't need it even just if turn i'm not going to actively attune to them i'll actively attune to them <laughs> might as well at this point But, uh, 12, uh, it's 12, 12 is almost coming up, so I assume we're taking a break. Oh, uh, yeah, we could go ahead and take a break, and then when we get back, I guess Let's we'll do the hero this. Heroes Feast and do it. Well, the question mm -hmm. I had on the Heroes Feast is that we know that the Hobgoblins would prefer the fight during the day. So, 
what do we anticipate will be coming at us? Probably I, night forces, and we have it for then, or do we save it for the day? If it happens during the day, then. Mm. Well, There's we can't have a hero feast during the battle, regardless. So yeah. the moment the fighting starts, it'd be pointless yeah. to even assume we're going to get it. So we might as well have it now at this point. Yeah, that's good. And also, if we fight Yeth Hounds, it'll be very helpful. Okay. I just wanted to bring it up. That's all. No, I, I totally get what you're saying. I'd rather have it for the fight with Azar Cool and Rage Jar's patron. Obviously, Rage Jar, the fear monger. Um, I'm sure his patron has similar abilities, but I think that uh, Carson was right that it'd be foolish of us to assume we can have a hero's feast during a battle. You, you like. Yo, Red Hand, let's take a picnic break. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I will see you guys in 10 minutes. All right. Oof. It'd be a pretty funny scene for us to have a hero's feast during the battle, just like shits blowing up, people screaming in the background, just like, oh, it's really good. Yeah, but it wouldn't be reasonable. No, no, not at all. I mean, it'd be the ultimate test for uh, Gerard and Manette cooking under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and, are you serious? <laughs> I mean, it'd be like a cooking show just turned up to 11. You know, you have a time constraint, there's a whole bunch of chaos happening around you, you'd still expect it to, to make a uh, perfect dish. Yeah. Like, Gerard oh. asks Minette to get something out of the pantry, she goes over to it, opens the door, the entire back wall's like been blown out. It's just like, a, you know, a sheer drop out in the pantry. Yeah. Just blood coming from the walls screamings in the background some guy's head can just roll on stage out of nowhere i know it sounds like a uh, a kitchen to me <laughs> if you've ever worked in the food industry <laughs> uh, i'll be right back <laughs> yeah same here
Uh. All right. Hmm. People are starting to trickle back in. That's good. All right, we're all back. So, we will continue. Mm hmm. All right. What has what is the decision on when you guys want to do the uh, heroes feast? Uh, sunset. Sunset. Sunset heroes feast. Okay. Yeah. The last meal. All right, let me call we'll, these guys out of here. And we're also getting the tattoos. Okay, I should have put all those on your sheets by now. So check your inventory. Maybe? Be under equipment. It's no, I called see it. Psychic Circuitry. All right. Yeah. Man, I know a certain barbarian in another game that would have killed for something like that. Yep. Damn. <laughs> All right. Well, what else? Um. Okay. That evening, you guys settle in, and partake of a a feast prepared by Trador Golden Brow um, for you and your allies. That, that you might be protected against uh, harm moving into the next uh, or the battles that are to come. So uh, let's see. Um, all right. So essentially, uh, let's see. It takes an hour to consume, uh, and the benefits don't reset. Uh, uh, Particularly, this feast gains several benefits, and the benefits last for 24 hours. All right, so everybody should gain the benefits. Well, I guess if you use spell slots and hit hit points during the day, you know, uh, it is what it is, kind of thing. But you can certainly gain the benefits of a short rest, um, and then. Um, I guess each of you can just roll your own 2d10. Nah, it might be easier if we just just roll it. There you go. Alright, so everybody gets 11 um, maximum HP increase. And then you heal the 11 that you just gained. So, um, on your character sheets, there's a little max section, right? So you just put 11 there to max your hit points a little bit more. Uh, all wisdom saves are made with advantage. Cannot be frightened. Cannot be poisoned um, during that time. I think you might still take poison damage, though. Because 5e, yeah. e 5e is weird. All right. Hmm. Okay. Sorry about that. Short resting. Mm, yeah, of course. Uh, all right. Uh, so. It's also, I think it could be an effect for you. Yes. Yep, there is. Make sure you guys apply it to yourself. So you do not forget. All right. Other things. Who is going to be your B team? Um, is another big question. Oh shit. Oh, final battle, guys. Uh, final battle, we dying. Ooh, B team. That reminds me. 
Uh, Gina has an ability that lets me, us get random assortments of bombs for being on the team, and she has basically had a collective week since like we left the elves, went through the thorn waste, went to the dwarves, and then we kind of mm -hmm. pushed her to the side. Yeah. We have a few extra bombs. Yeah, go provide. grab them. Where do we, oh, you can just grab them out of like the, um. Well, you, you know what bombs she can provide, right? Like you. This, the ability just says random bombs. Oh, I, I see, I see. Okay, all right, I'll grab them for you then. Uh, let's see. So while he's doing that, I want the dwarves on our B team slot. Mm -hmm. Good call. I wish we had Umegs. I miss Umegs. I mean, he he's technically here since the dwarves oh, are here. That's right. All right. So there's that. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the two dwarves taste up one slot, and we want Ume. So that's two slots already taken. I need little Tony in there. Little. Yeah. All oh, right, cause you don't. Okay. So yeah, to little Tony. <laughs> so that's three. We got two more, right? Well, as you're making your decision, um, Ash's snow gift arrives uh, fashionably late to to the dinner where you're discussing, you know, what to do and who to bring with you moving forward, and she says. Uh, all right, it took all day, but we managed to track down the druid that was responsible. And the best solution they had was to kill him again <laughs> and reincarnate him. Did you do that? We did. Okay. Rajin, well, results. Uh, and so you see stepping into the doorway, the I chattest, the chattest human man. <laughs> what the? <laughs> you've ever seen. <laughs> yes, boy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes. He looks at all of you and he says, uh, "Did you miss me?" <laughs> <laughs> all right. This could Good not outcome. have gone any more perfect. Yep. I'm gonna be shitting iron ingots for a week, but man, look at all of this. But you see that the body below the neck, not depicted in this miniature, is still total dad bod. Like, total beefy boy, uh, doesn't miss meals, uh, got that extra padding, uh, kind, kind of deal. And he, uh, he puts both hands on his, uh, his, his exposed stomach. He's wearing a vest and some baggy hammer pants. That seems to be the only clothes they could get him to wear. So he's kind of like, <laughs> huh, we need I'm a game for? No, I'm thinking, like, uh, Mr. Fantastic before, or not Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic? Oh, sorry, Mr. Incredible. Um, mm. Oh. Before, before oh, he goes wow. through, like, the whole training montage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Like a, like a big guy that, you know, is strong, but is not defined. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so we're bringing a Raijin, too, okay? Uh, uh, I don't know about that. We've so. got better <laughs> Uh It's good to it's have a fighter. <laughs> um, I would say Bronson is his ability. Mm. Ship. Yeah, yeah, that's... Mm-hmm. So we said we had Umegs, Bronson, Dwarves, um, Tony. So we got one more. Jarrett and Manette. In the temp HP. Uh, what's Rafina's ability now? I recall something about her leveling up. Uh, she can essentially, uh, if I remember, it's like charm plants and flora. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was her upgrade ability. Mm. Her base one is essentially like life transference. Like... Get, you take damage, but you heal someone. That could come in clutch. So wait, Bronson, Dwarves, Little Tony. Who is the fourth one? Umeg. Umeg? Okay. Alright. Uh, for the last one, I mean, the temp HP from Gerard the Manette. Yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, that's, valuable. that's always a good one. The only other thing I can think of is, like, Sasha and Layla's uh, advantage on death saves, but... Mm. Wait. No, for Hero's Feast isn't temp HP, so we can stack these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Hero's Feast is good stuff. Yeah. All right, Gerard and Minette. Okay. Yeah. All right. Eating a lot. Hero's Feast and On the, the front sack lines, lunch. throw in uh, pans and fucking ladles. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
Uh, speaking of that. Yeah, I'm not there. bringing my assist. Not bringing my assistance out into this nonsense. You sure? It's not too late. <laughs> Always roll me. Exactly. This is the first time I've rolled double digits in a long time. Whoops, didn't mean to crit that. Oh, yeah. Uh, does the sack launch work for Claw? Uh, yeah. Long ago, I accepted the completely unbalanced nature of the Beast Heart that it really is just you have two fucking characters. Like, um, you know, I, I'm over it. I'm over it. Colville at least tried. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ouch. But, I, but after playing through a whole campaign with, with uh, one as a player as an ally and then running one for it's a hundred percent just you have two characters um yeah, yeah. the the act yeah the action economy is certainly not balanced on that uh the particular class but it's still pretty cool it's very flavorful yeah i mean for lower level orion just by himself he was probably no better than just like an NPC. <laughs> right 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 um but then everything else comes with uh with any of the but mm -hmm. at higher levels, I can definitely see it. It's, yeah. It's... Yeah, but I mean, it's no more overpowered than any spellcaster who starts summoning monsters. <laughs> yeah, it's still, it's still below any other spellcaster. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But it's certainly better than most non casters. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, cool. <clears throat> all right. So, um, Knight settles over the town. Mm -hmm. And the defenders of Brindle uh, wait to see what happens. All right. Now, you guys said that you seeded misinformation today. What was the information that you were hoping to seed if you did follow through with that plan? That the clerics would be um, not where they're actually at. Whatever yeah. we decided. To yeah, we'd, they'd be congregating we telling at them... the Palar Temple, but actually yeah. I'll either spread out. Okay, so and you said me... they're all at the temple, but in actuality they will be wearing non-cleric garb, and they will be moving with uh, among uh, throughout the city. Correct. Okay. And to kind of make that seem a little bit more real who will be at the temple will be uh, Golden Brow and maybe like one or two other clerics just to give the and then mm -hmm. soldiers dressed up as clerics damn soldiers that they're like hey buddy how do you feel about dying <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> and they're like yeah okay. you're not gonna die you have a you have a hero of rest and the most powerful cleric of Palor on your side you'll be fine the only most powerful cleric of Palor on your side hey <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Friendly fire, man. <laughs> oh, I miss guy. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me go in here. Um, I guess the only other misinformation, probably, well, is that the bridge is most definitely not trapped. <laughs> okay, because you wanted them to like second guess themselves on that. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. But wait, okay. we didn't trap the bridge. Yeah, but we didn't trap the bridge. It's mind games. <laughs> they wouldn't mm -hmm. fall for it a second time, would they? We're we're telling them as if in confidence that we didn't trap the bridge. Yeah. But you did trap the bridge. But we did, we did trap the bridge. It's so reverse this psychology. Is, so this is like Schrodinger's cat. But, the bridge. Yeah. Okay. But we're trying to feed them misinformation so that. This doesn't, this doesn't okay, check so out then, to me. Understood, understood. So then we so, would say that we did trap the bridge. Yeah, in that okay. Case. Gotcha, yes, exactly. Gotcha. Okay, fair enough. All right. Um, as night settles in, as the sun dips below the horizon, as the clouds begin to move in for the heavily overcast day that is to come, 
You can still see the twinkling of a few stars. And... Hold on. Let me double check the moon situation here real quick. Um, yeah. And you can see the, uh, the light of the waning moon. And the air is still. Except for the occasional sounds outside the city of uh, battle drums and uh, war cries. The heavy kind of shifting sound that almost sounds like churning earth of troops being uh, moved about. Within the city, there is a tense stillness in the air as everyone waits by their assigned stations, wondering when the attack will come. The hours pass, and it grows later and later. At it, at some point, do you guys opt to sleep, or do you push through, knowing that, uh, worst case scenario, you might lose your well-rested buff? Do you guys think it's worth just staying up at this point? I mean, I mean, what do we lose if we rest? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, if you if you're resting and you get roused, I mean, you know, like nothing. I'm just wondering, like, character wise, would your character be, uh, like, yeah, I I need to get some sleep. The the attack hasn't come yet. I'm I'm going to rest. Guy or, would be I'm definitely on that team. Sorry, he oh. has a resurrection sickness still. The last oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, definitely, right. definitely. Fair enough. I think we've also uh, witnessed how important they view sleep and you know in the way that they are regimented so i think i'd want to kind of keep up with them in that regard yeah there's a certain number of their troops that probably hit but for what we probably gave probably be better to keep ourselves All right. rested so what time do you finally give up on uh staying up 10 9 uh, sounds good to me Going with nine yep. o'clock. Yep. Okay. Nine. nine was a good choice. Um, because around four in the morning, uh, the sounds of battle, the horns of war, as it were, uh, begin to uh, begin to blow. The drums uh, pound out a beat, and the earth seems to shake as the Red Hand's troops uh, begin to move. All right, and Ooh. you Ooh, feel for like an hour at this point. Uh, yes. Yeah. All right, and you feel that you have entered wave one of the Battle of Brindle. Oh boy, let's go! Let's fucking go! All right. So... Oh god, I'm nauseous already. <laughs> So a, a table was generated. A table was generated. Can you guys see anything that I'm putting into chat or no? Probably no. not. It's okay. All right, good, good, good. Um, wait. So does that mean you didn't get to see the uh, things that got rolled on the table, or did those show up? Correct. Nope. Yeah, we didn't see anything. It's wrong. been private the whole game. Oh, I'm sorry, Bartimus. Uh, all right. So it was a potion of recovery. Oh. Uh, thermal grease. Uh, eggshell grenade. Mage Blood Elixir, Flash Powder, and Oil Template. Cool, thanks. Yeah. And I can well, just drag those into my Actually, sheet. don't take Oil Template. Oil Template shouldn't have been on the table. Hold on. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> ah, here we go. I'll roll a fresh one. It's still uh, not yeah, displayed. I, I, that's good. Uh, no. Alchemist fire. Nice. I, I don't want it displayed. Okay. So. Um, all right. So anyways, a table was generated with a lot of bad results. As you remove things from the board, that table had some of the bad things were removed. Um, as you gained allies, the table had good things added to it. So at the beginning of each wave, I roll on this table, and then that would essentially improve or make worse your situation in that given 
wave. So there's still the chaos of war and all that kind of stuff. But if you had not done anything against the red hand, it would only be bad results. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and roll on the table a couple times. Uh. Ooh. Okay. Um, oh, that's spicy as hell. All right. Uh, let's see. So first, and most disturbingly, um, is a lizard folk betrayal. Despite their initial alliance, there is a faction of lizard folks um, who, for whatever reason, perhaps influenced by the hobgoblins, perhaps magically coerced into this, perhaps for other reasons, um, they turn on their own allies and uh, unleash their giant crocodiles uh, amongst their former allies. This chaos and confusion within the river uh, defenses um, basically negates the lizard folks' assistance um, in this in this wave as they uh, are suddenly betrayed from within. It's unfortunate. Um, siege weapon duel. The dwarven engineers, uh, driven by their determination to protect uh, the city. Um, roll out some powerful new siege weapons that they boast are capable of piercing even the ancient red dragon of Bithriax's scales. Um, this weapon is an enormous ballista with enchanted bolts, and it is now the centerpiece of the confrontation against a Bithriax. Uh, you would gain this as a layer action uh, if you engage a Bithriax during any of the current or future waves of the battle sick oh damn that's exactly what we need all right uh burning arrows uh the hobgoblins rain down a barrage of flaming arrows upon the defender's position the city's skyline is illuminated by the fiery projectors uh that begin setting buildings ablaze and forcing the defenders uh to contend with both the enemy forces and the encroaching inferno all right, so two bad things, one good thing, one really good thing, though. And with the overcast skies, with the sun not yet risen, um, but sort of promising a dim, uh, cloudy day, in wave one, there is no Stein of a Bithriax. I will take you over to the map of the city where we'll like sportscaster style draw all over it. Oh, you guys are already on the map of the city. I thought you guys were on the role play scene this whole time. Ah, I'm the worst. All right. So uh, over here, your lizard folk were, your lizard folk were seated all along the river. But with this betrayal within their own ranks, uh, this kind of takes them out of the fighting as they are busy fighting each other. Rumors about the dangers of the bridge mean that only uh, goblins and hill giants are being sent down the bridge. So, you know, if shit happens, it happens. Um, this outer area right here uh, is likely to fall very quickly. As you know, the defenders pretty much abandoned it uh, right away. Um, all along the western fronts, they have hill giants lined up uh, in key spots. They are trying to break down uh, the walls themselves, not worrying about the gates. Uh, the main focus seems to be here. And then um, with distractions everywhere else. But this seems to be the spot where they're trying to bust down the wall via um, hill giant siege rocks and whatnot. All right. Uh, the under part of the city is well cared for and locked down. You don't think you need to worry about that at all. And let me see if there's anything else noteworthy. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, 
from the southern uh, gates here, they are managing to hold pretty well. There does not seem to be any troops uh, attempting to get in through the eastern gates, uh, which is a bit unusual. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that becomes apparent very quickly as you see marching from the east tirelessly through the night are hideous devils. And they uh, are accompanied by human troops bearing the colors and banners of Elser Cross. I'm sorry, what? Devils. Mm -hmm. And they're, uh, they're with people bearing the banners and colors of Elser Cross. The the place right oh no i heard you i was just oh okay okay um <laughs> they all they also have great horned winged uh devils as well that are um sort of bolstering and rallying and organizing this legion of uh bearded devils towards the gate uh you may attempt religion or arcana checks to see if you could recognize the demons and or the devils and figure out what's going on with that Oh, look at guy like god damn guy what's going on in elser cross i'm gonna look uh, I, us. I tried to tell you all to go there <laughs> i mean what you knew <laughs> i knew that there were things happening it was an option all right mm. so uh barnabas you recognize these as bearded devils they are kind of the rank and file devils of the um the hells as it were they fight with uh, Glaive and Beard, uh, both of which can cause um, bleed effects and um, diseases. They are well-trained and regimented, so in a way they match very closely with, you know, the Red Hand's fighting style. You realize right away that the winged horned uh, devils are not uh, pit fiends, so that's good, but they are horned devils, which is like diet pit fiend um they have the ability to hurl fire um and uh they are um from a distance the fire is manageable in melee they can bust out uh, a pretty decent contingent of melee attacks and magic uh mixed back and forth um their main ability is their excellent flight speed and ability to kind of move around the battlefield quickly Overall, with your Arcana check, you feel like it could have been a lot worse, um, but this is an unforeseen um, situation, and you are not sure how the troops managed to reach the Eastern Front without any detection from your scouts and spies. Do you see shrug and say devil there? shit. Um, let's see, the leader, uh, Trask, um, from this distance, you cannot see Trask. No um, words. yeah. All right, uh, let's see. So, the main concern right here is that the, the walls here are in the greatest danger. Um, and there is a massive force moving across this bridge. And without your river uh, defense front which kind of caves in on itself a little bit um, you're having to move troops uh, to sort of compensate along this north wall because now many of the flying units are kind of coming in from the north um, and that's probably where a lot of the fires are being started from is from these flying units so do you hold this uh this wave and hope that the city's defenders can manage on their own or do you want to try and engage one of the uh possible skirmishes that is happening the the two the two major ones are the north bridge and then the western wall are the two major ones um you could also try to engage the uh 
the devils before they reach the wall, but it's a lot of that's a lot of devils to deal with. And oh, they have know... they haven't even reached the wall yet in wave one. Oh, that's good. But the eastern wall is not as well defended as the others, though. Correct. It is. It is not because um, they assumed that you know based yeah. on the troop movements and stuff that they would be coming from uh, the south and the west, mm -hmm. and that they would have some uh, assistance from the north. Right. I well, say I... we deal with the new jets. Yeah. Situation, because we need them back in line to help us. I agree. We're completely exposed from the north, and I think it's time to destroy the bridge and take away the avenue. I have a thought on how we might be able to achieve that. I don't know how big this bridge is, though. And, you know, we're seeing it from pretty high up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like Skull Gorge Bridge all over again, essentially. Oh okay. god. Okay. So, I don't have a bomb, but what we do have is a Jabberwock Eye, which was described as being highly volatile. That doesn't equate to highly explosive i mean it makes a it's the key ingredient for the fire line wand of destruction and the key description of it is it sometimes fails or it might fail has like a small percent chance of fail and it just blows up in your hand do we know if we were to take out the are we to assume there might be mind benders yeah the north there's... Oh, yeah. I mean, based on the strange uh, behavior and, of the creatures, um, you could give me a second Arcana check um, to see if you could puzzle out a, a couple of avenues that might have resulted in their sudden uh, and unexpected betrayal. So this would be a Arcana with training, if anybody wants to make it. Do you want to do that one, Aragorn? Or... I just want the new jets back on our side because we can't oh. continue okay. the war without them. To. Okay, so Barnabas, it could be one. Legitimately, there are some new jacks that uh, have decided this is their chance. Um, they're going to use the chaos of war to take over, um, remove what passes for political rivals within the tribe, and take things in a new direction uh another possibility is that they are being magically controlled um so there there's that and then the third option is that the research and study that regirix did on these creatures to um create her monstrosities may have given the um the devastators and the mindbenders uh and the war singers better um knowledge of how they could um affect and manipulate uh the new jacks they may have been poisoned um mind controlled that way or simply because their defenses are well known now to the enemy they could be compromised uh through a number of different means okay I convey that that doesn't give us a lot of certainty but uh if it's the first one that's the non-magical one then that just really sucks because right. that means that means seems that unlikely this... but possible right right seems like a weird time to ha cause beef within your tribe when you're also trying to fight a war doesn't seem logical but they're lizard people but i'm not gonna look for too much reason i mean let's it's just go opportune time so go yeah, to the i mean if they were if they were promised if they were promised uh, like dominion right, right. over over like the witchwood and the uh, and the fence in exchange for this treachery i mean just because they are a people that don't believe in deception i mean like they would deceive know. us <laughs> we'll just, just be, deceive each other they, they would, would, would they would Who do knows? deceptions oh i bet your guys don't let me piss yeah. but let's just deal let's with, with the folks yeah. let's just go and see what's happening Okay, so the goal then is to head over to the bridge. Deal with yep. the north. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me get you guys set up on that real quick. Did Did we bring little Tony as an ally? Yeah, he was one of the five. Nope. Yeah. Good, good. Good. I don't know if that helps, but he might be able to have some insight. All right. Hmm. 
I'll put you on this here loading screen for a second. There we go. Well, I guess I, the IE doesn't matter. I have something to destroy a bridge with if we need to. I'm so mad he turned into this. <laughs> You're still what? what? Wait, what? Why? I'm just You're mad. mad. He's not mad, but it's like. <laughs> it's entirely your fault. Well, I don't know if it's his entirely yeah, his fault. Yeah, Bryce, Bryce is an adult. He makes his own decisions. All right, let's see. Um, mm, mm, yeah, we'll use this bridge tower map. This one looks pretty dope. All right. Oh my God. Hold on. That feels when nothing is uh, is working behind the screen. All right, hold on. Okay. You guys ended up sort of scattered all over because sometimes that happens when you do a, a foundry paste. Uh, let's see. I don't have everybody here. That's unfortunate. All right. As we come up to the bridge, Barnabas pulls out a new gun that he's been working on that's essentially an automatic grenade launcher. One, Didn't two. I tell you not to make that? <laughs> uh, well, here we are, desperate times. I just have to ask, in the era we're in, how are such things possible? I, I just so many. The magic of craftsmen. I can't actually hit anything with this. It uh, I has it has attacks with disadvantage and it uses my dexterity modifier to aim. Who, who am I missing here? Guy, Aragor, Jurt, Layla, Orion, Claude, um, Barnabas, Barnabas, Barnabas. There we go. His mini is so small. Sometimes I think he's there, but he's not. There he is. Okay. Um. Okay. And. Now, I assume that the goal is not some. Like, well, I don't know what your goal is. I guess I'll just have to find out. But, um. My understanding was that. Right? Well, well, it's to see if they're they're sending. What well, the reports were is that they're sending goblins and giants across the bridge. I guess mm. we're just repelling that force, um, and that show of, uh, well, while while they kind of fight amongst themselves down in the water, sort of thing. And they get the they can sort it out if we can deal with the rest of it. Okay, got it. Yeah. Also, um, maybe get a consult from Little Tony to see what he thinks about the matter. One um one up is that uh, I don't think devils do devils have blood. <laughs> I think we're free oh, game, free real. We can kill as many yeah. devils as we want. <laughs> I think. I oh, have... you guys are going with the with the. We're gonna try to kill everybody in non-lethal approach. Like I thought you guys were memeing me. That's fucking no. awesome. Okay, all right. Uh, Wait, what? We are? No, we're Damn. not doing that. Oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah. We're do it. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna be possible with any magic. Yeah, though. we're. <laughs> So a fireball, it's not lethal, right? <laughs> I mean, in Pathfinder, there's feats for that. Just saying, to make oh a non-lethal fire. Yeah, it's not a like Pathfinder fire. kid now. <laughs> no, he's been, I just he's think been it, a I Pathfinder kid for it, weeks now. <laughs> I think some of it's neat. That's all. I just think some of it's neat. Jeez. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. I'm just sad. It's gonna take forever for me to teach people that I never actually know the rules and I'm just making shit up and that they're wasting their time trying to teach me the right rules. Uh, Wait, what? But we'll have to start that the whole culture over again. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll take you guys over to the map now. My bad. So I have a lot of, it's a big city. So I have a lot of maps, but I didn't want to know ahead of time what was coming up on the table. So I've been, I rolled this, these results live and I'm trying to build these encounters based on the rolls. Um, so I apologize for the delay there. Whoa. Oh, oh cool. Okay. Oh, shit. Well, so, right. do you enough bombs to blow this bridge up? Now he asks. So the forces of Brindle, they are like, uh, 
they were hesitant to open the gates for you, but you you guys were like, nah, dog, we got this. And they were like, okay. So they opened this gate, and then they lowered the gate again so that you guys could do what you got to do. Is that does yeah, that work or it's fine? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So oh. they will be they will be supporting from this tower um, via layer action. All right. The the question I have for you is seeing the situation here. Like, what is the goal? Just to fucking fight these guys off and repel them? Yeah. I mean, that's ultimately our kind of goal. My goal. We ju we we have like five different types of bombs, right? We. I mean, as far as like de demolition bombs, we have nothing. Like, I have not made a big blue bomb since Warkle North Layer, I think. But I have some improvised options. I but say yeah, we just, just, just I say them. we just we just route them. Yeah, we just try and kill as many as we can. I mean, it stands to reason that this bridge, like the other bridge, would have one of those weak points that would cause it to collapse pretty easily. But if you guys rush out there to fight them, we're not going to do that. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Do you guys want to just try to destroy, uh, focus on destroying the bridge uh, rather than dealing with these guys? Or... Do you trust your dwarven allies to destroy the bridge, like behind you, essentially? Uh, what? <laughs> well, and and you hold them off long enough for them to do that. I like that idea. Sure. That sounds yeah, that, cool. that works for me. Um, okay. And then hopefully the, the the lizard folks will sort themselves out and they'll just ferry us back across. Okay. Okay. That's, I like that's this. A lot plan. of hope. That's a lot of hope. Yeah. That's so, what we gotta have, though. So let's do it. I mean, you got uh, you guys were recently talking about video game bosses or, or fights and stuff like that. So this is defend the area. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for it. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, I will secretly roll um, how many rounds you must hold the gate for, and then uh, if you make it to that point, then uh, the bridge behind you will be destroyed, and they can't go any further. This is a tower defense, so I will, every round, there will be more dudes that just come onto the map. Remember, guys. Oh, there's already a lot of dudes. Yeah, keep in mind, we're going to be wasting a lot of resources if we, you know. I mean, it's uh, resource management. Depends yeah, on is that, I'm, I'm just saying. We have, like, another wave after this. At least, yeah, there's quite, there's many waves. Uh, all right, so I'm adding all of the meaningful people and the minion squad leaders to the initiative tracker. All right, and then the new Jack in the water fighting amongst themselves is sadly their business. All right, uh, here we go. I'm going to roll all the NPCs in. Hopefully that works. You might want to hide the B2 members. Uh, I don't think I put them into... Oh, 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 oh they're just there. Okay. Yeah, they're just there. Yeah. Oh, I think I have too many forces. <laughs> it's really having a hard time rolling everybody into initiative. Alright. Oh! Okay. Uh... All right, has has everybody rolled in? Oh. Oh, well, you have now. All right. Oh, thank, thank you. Oh, thank you. Ah, sweet. Okay. Orion, you won the initiative here. All righty. Um, I just realized this is the first battle since he's joined back with the party. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. All right. Uh, starting off. Uh. Ferocity gain from Claw, he gets four. I think? Hmm. Knowing that these are minions. Mm hmm I think for right now, Orion and Claw, they're gonna hold where they are. Uh, and both are going to ready actions to... Actually, no, that's... Correct. Uh, they're going to move forward. 
10. Just 10 feet closer. And then they're both going to hold actions for any hostile creatures that move beyond... I'm going to say any that move beyond this line. Okay. And that's going to be it. I will pass to... Does anyone have any prep buffs that they want to start putting up first before this all kicks off? Yeah. I yeah, same here. All right. I will pass to I'll pass to Aragorn. All right. Aragorn, you're up. Okay. Mm. We're trying to funnel them in, so where is he? Where's Aragorn? At? You're at the back. Oh, he's under the... Oh, there he is. Shit. All right. He's going to... Orion is currently mounting Claude, right? Yep. Wait, why can't Jerry be closer? Fuck. Alright, screw it. He's going to, uh... Pat... Put a hand on himself and one on Claude's, uh... Tail. And he will twin cast... Well, actually... He's going to spend four hit dice using Consume Self to cast Fly at fourth level on himself and Orion. All right. So minus four hit dice. Orion, but not Claude. I mean Claude, Claude. Okay. So you. Because Orion's Claude right, Claude right now. Are going to yeah. get Fly. All right. So you will feel uh, Orion, you will feel Claude lift a little bit off the ground. And he's going to look over to Jert and say, uh, Guess it's your turn now. Alright then. Okay, uh, Jert, you're up. He takes out the Mercurial Reaver and casts Jump on himself. I'm All sorry, right. Ergo will fly out 20 feet. Cast jump on yourself. Got it. Oh, oh. sorry. Uh, uh, you, you, yeah, you do it. You do it. That's fine. All right. Uh, all right. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we're just gonna jump up. We're gonna move up and get into the front line. We're gonna leap over Orion and Claude. I'm gonna land right here. I. Okay. Uh, uh, as he comes crashing down, what's up? Oh no, go go go. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I'm probably gonna take some hits, so I'm going to use my bonus action to uh, wild surge rage. Ooh, okay. Uh, here we go. I see you moved a safe distance from your allies before wild surge raging. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. <laughs> It's very courteous. I think this is the first time that Ryan would have seen this uh, Wild Sword Rage. Dude, uh, I can teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space I can see, and until my rage ends, I can teleport again as a bonus action. Oh, oh that's God. a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Fucking baller open. So yeah, as he lands uh, with the Hero Reaver in his hand, there's this yeah. ringing of uh, magical fey energy. And as it happens, he uh, teleports right here. Ooh, all right. Uh, the goblins um, sort of let out cries of alarm, um, but ready themselves for, for battle. Um, as you appear next to them, they will use... Uh, let me see if this actually works, because you teleported in. Um, ends its turn within five feet of them. Yep. So they're going to go ahead and use Skirmisher, and they're going to just scatter from you. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. fair. Right. Yeah, so with the ringing of magic, he teleports there, and then as soon as they scatter, he he spins the Mercurial Reaver, and I guess he's going to face down the warg instead. Uh, okay. I think Wait. that is all my actions. It also has Skirmisher, so it's oh, like, oh, oh, you know what? <laughs> I can still reach him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all okay. right. Awesome. Um, who do you pass to? Um, hmm. Anybody else got any buffs they want to do before they start uh, unleashing? I would like uh, to unleash. Well, there's a guy. Hold on. This guy, too. 
Do I have anything? I'm just saying that I don't have buffs. I'm just a guy. I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna pass to the guy. All right. The guy. The guy. The guy. You're up. All right. It's been many a months. Uh, so, the guy will turn towards his allies. You know what? But in the end, he will change his course. He will do the classic of moving up and casting fairy fire. Nice. That's a good okay. One. This is a certified guy classic. He's going to use it on the hill giant. Good stuff. Well, you end everything near the hill giant, right? Ah, uh, correct. Yeah. These guys aren't really hidden. They're just a ninja squad. That's why they're um have that going on all right um let's see where's that fairy fire all them dudes okay so i will roll the one guy from poop squad uh and then let's see i will roll one saving throw for all of orange squad you got it all right and then of course this guy right here so, uh, here we go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ooh, they all fail. So they are all, uh, made easy targets by the fairy fire. So let's see, we'll make them all glow. I'm sure that won't mess up anybody's browsers. And then we'll go ahead and... You can do it, Foundry. Believe in yourself. There we go. Uh, all right, sweet. Uh, anything else from Guy? Hmm, I think he will. Bonus action, Bardic Inspiration on okay. Orion. Help him in his hunt. All right. Thank bardic you, Inspiration for Orion. Okay, so um, who do you pass to, Guy? Now I should ask the same thing. Does anybody else want to do buffs? There's Layla as well. Layla has buff spells, right? He will walk yeah. back 20 more feet because he has a mm -hmm. uh, 40 foot speed. And he will pass to Layla. Sure. Okay. Uh, your Bardic is a D8, right? Uh, it is, in fact, a D8. I'm not level 10 Bard. Thank you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. See, I don't know what spells they would have memorized, yeah. so I'm just going to go off of the list they have, and then they could always change it uh, when they get back next week. Uh, when, when in doubt, you could always crotch bolt a giant. That's true. <laughs> or entangle. If they, they had entangle, the yeah, if they already had uh, entangle memorized for sure. They also have fairy fire. Um, they don't. 60 feet though i feel like they would probably wait on it yeah, uh, it's a bit closer would uh entangle fill this bridge i feel like ah, here we go here we go aura of vitality that seems like a good one um healing energy emanates from you in aura 30 feet until spells the aura moves with you as a bonus action and it lasts for a whole minute so if they get that up this round they can be like a beacon of healing for you guys throughout the battle question mark that sounds, sounds good. Yeah, sounds wise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. We'll do that. I think when in doubt, probably just a guiding bolt and archer form for right now. Mm, that range, sounds good, too. Just long range all artillery. Right. Yeah, all right. So we'll do a starry form of the archer and then one of their 40 free guiding bolts a day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Only other Can thing I is probably say? fire shields, but I don't know if they want to do that because that's a high level spell. Yeah, I yeah. think they will hold back on that. Okay. And then that will save Barnabas to go last so that Barnabas could hopefully control the initiative. What? All right. Yeah, that sounds good, right? Yeah. All right. So let's see, 120 feet. Uh, you could probably hit that from the back. Uh, yeah. All right. Here we go. All right, with advantage, that is a big fat 20 on the giant as it slams into him. Uh, 
and then he will steal. All right, let me get rid of this template. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jert, you're right there. Um, he is going to come striding towards you, and I guess he'll end his turn in your space. And he is going to. Mm, let's see. What's this guy got going on? Anything's a weapon. Ah, here we go. Weckless. Um, all right. So as he, as he comes up, he is uh, just crying out. He takes his giant club and he's going to swing on you twice. Here we go. So a 27 for 19 and a 23 for 18. Uh, and each of those requires a strength save or knocked prone. Okay, let's see here. Alright, uh... On the, uh... Actually, I can just take that. That's fine. So I have to make a strength save? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, twice. But you're no. at advantage because of yep. your... Yep. 26, or 20, yeah, 26 and 24. Beautiful. Alright, you take these, like, hits that would easily kill maybe two, three common folk, uh, and you don't move a single inch as the uh, the force of the blow hits you and you just hear the kind of crackle of gravel against your boots as you uh, maintain your position. All right. Um, he is going to pass to uh, this war rider right here. And he is going to use a bonus action to disengage because Gerblin. And then he's going to move forward uh, to engage with Claude and Orion. Cool. He crossed the line. He gets shot. All right. Are you shooting the warg or the rider? Uh, I'm going to shoot the warg. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to shoot. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, so 26 to hit. Ooh, damn. Uh, against the warg, that is going to hit. And that is all of that damage. Holy um, shit! Well, actually, no, sorry, not not the chosen quarry. I did not chosen quarry, so it's just okay. the twenty-one points of damage total. So what you kind of see is there's a slight vibration on the wind serpent bow as well as the arrow that he is pulling out the fire, mm -hmm. and when he shoots it and it hits this creature, there's just a small because he's using a fire arrow, there's a small, essentially a firecracker that goes off as uh, both thunder and fire damage gets uh, applied. Oh shit, okay. All right, the warg is barely hanging on. Um, <laughs> cool, he got within reach of Claw. Claw goes. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Ready action. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, 14. Okay. Uh, 14 is going to hit. Uh, the Gerblin will use his reaction uh, of mounted combatant. I don't know if you actually even use a reaction. Uh, he's just going to force an attack target as mount to target him instead. Okay. So he will take this hit. All right. He takes nine. All right. Yeah, it's, it doesn't require a reaction. To... Oh, he's in bad shape. <laughs> All right. Um... He is going to, because he has moved at least 15 feet before attacking, make his attack with advantage, he will swing out at Orion. Uh, so a 20 for 9. That does hit. Okay. God damn. <laughs> 9 damage, but at what cost? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright. When they literally have to give everything for 9 points of damage. Beautiful. Alright. Um, these gerbs are going to... Um, collectively move. This is Ninja Squad. They're going to use a bonus action to disengage. Uh, they're going to move forward 30 feet. Uh, and then collectively as a group, they are going to fire at uh, known spell casters. So I think they will target uh, Layla. Seems right. All right, so they're going to use a group attack. So this attack is made at plus five. 
Um, because there's five of them. Uh, so this is a 21 for a one point of damage. But since there was five of them, it is five points of damage. Uh, but then her speed is reduced uh, by 25. All right. So let's see. What do we use for speed? And for now, I'm just going to put... Ah, here we go. Speed lowered. I'll just put negative 20 because I didn't actually have the foresight to do a negative 25. Um, and then she takes five points of damage. All right. And let's see. That will pass to these guys right here. They are going to move into position to flank Jert Bandon uh, with the giant. All right. What's the duration uh, on that slow shot, by the way? Do we know? Oh, it's um, until the end of her turn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, uh, this guy moves in. He's just yeah. going to have the doggo make the attack. Uh, yeah. All right. Since they moved at least 15 feet. Uh, I'm going to use my reaction to oh. negate the advantage. Ooh, okay. Because they're exactly within 60 feet. So I don't need to worry about All right. that. Fair enough. Uh, so it's just going to make a regular attack with a plus two from the flank. Uh, here we go. Uh, and that's going to miss with an 11. All right. And let's see. So they're done. I'm just going to move right to left. That'll be the easiest way to keep track of these guys. Um, all right. These gerbs are going to run uh, to here. Bonus action disengage. And then they're going to run again up to here. All right, uh, orange gerbs, uh, they're going to move to here. And then let me measure out some distance here. Hmm. Okay. Curse the tiny short bows. Uh, let's see. Hmm. They got an 80 foot. That's not bad. They could. Yeah. All right. So they will fire on Claude. So this is a 18 for five damage and reduce your speed by 25. Does that um, hit? Um, that does hit. Okay. Uh, sorry, I just want that. All right. Mm, let's see. These guys will go. Cool. Uh, I'm going to force that attack to hit Orion instead because he also has mounted combatant. Ooh. All right. Um, Claude appreciates that ability. Uh, as this guy runs up, he is going to attack Jert with advantage from the warg. Uh, 17? I don't think that's Just hit. Oh, shit. Okay. So, five damage and another strength save uh, to avoid being knocked prone. Yep. Uh, you said that damage was six total, right, from the shot? Uh, uh ooh, very nice. Let me get you your boon. Uh, no, the damage was five total. Okay, five. With minions, they times their base damage by the number of minions that participate. Ah, okay, it was multiplying that by five. I thought mm. it just added a flat. So, exa for example, like the Hobgoblin uh, Marines have a base damage of three. So if there's five of them, that'll be 15 damage gotcha. plus their martial advantage or whatever. All right, these guys move forward and then they take a dash uh, and that's all they do. Um, let's see. This guy's going to move forward. And he will uh, take a dash, which will provoke an opportunity attack uh, from Jert Bandon. So I guess they'll do a disengage to prevent that. So they'll just move, disengage, dash. All right. Uh, this squad is going to move up to here so they're gonna move and dash all right this giant is gonna move up to here and then he's gonna just grab one of these barrels and i guess he's gonna danky kong that barrel so let's see uh 240 feet if they want to uh but it'll be a disadvantage uh yeah sure um guy it's been a while since you got attacked um this dude's gonna throw a, a donkey kong barrel 
from 240 feet away. I think that's uh, within range. Yeah, so it's going to be a disadvantage, guy. Word. All right. Uh, 13 uh, for 21 points of damage. So it would sort of smash, I think, in the, against the gate behind you. Um, all right. That is his turn. That brings us to the pink squad. Pink squad's going to move up. And I guess they will dash to get closer. Same with blue squad. Uh, and then I'm just going to have everybody else on the bridge move up. And then as they move up and pass to Barnabas, there will be even more of them showing up next round. So, uh, Barnabas, finish this up. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I apologize. I, I, I'm trying to adjust for my plan for how they just moved, but I think I'm ready. So I'm going to move up. And as Barnabas does, you see the ring on his hand glow to the huge, like, tremendous light, and it starts to effuse into the gun, and it starts to like shake and like rattle with the energy that's being forced into it. And he's about to cast a second level spell as a tremendous beam of fire extends 120 feet between him and this goblin. I'm trying to basically hit the okay. words, everything in between here, do, do you, mainly do you wanna, hitting. Do you want to yeah. draw a template with the template? I tool? am looking for it. I actually have okay. never used the template. So before. you do the little L shaped arrow beneath the person. And then there's going to be an arrow that points up and down at the same time. And you select that. And then when you left click drag, it will create a line template for you. Okay. I clicked on the L thing and then that's not what am I doing wrong? Oh, I see. I need. It template. says, when you mouse over, it says Ray Template. Ray Template, got it. Okay. Yep. And then I drag that from me to him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm here. Sorry, the map's very big. I can, like you said, it's hard to see Barnabas. <laughs> uh, 12, like 120. Okay. Everything between here and there. I don't see your template. You don't see the template that I'm holding? Yeah, uh, let go of it, so it... Uh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, all, all of those things. Uh, all right. Uh, Beautiful. All right, so what is the what, what is the effect? What's happening? So, yes, so I am casting the spell Perforating Smite, which is a Renaissance spell from his special feat, and I'm trying okay. to cast it right now, but I'm panicking because there's a lot of things rushing at us. All right. Uh, perforating Smite, here it comes. Roll. Roll. But actually roll. Cast spell. And then basically I'm going to then use this and that will dictate the damage for it. Okay, so it's it's one firearm attack to create the damage yep. of this the spell and then they all make dexterity saving throws. Got yes. it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yes, all right, but, uh, so unfortunately that was a low damage attack. Uh, so right. for, for 14 damage, a deck save for everyone in between. All right. I'm going to roll one save for all of black and one save for all of pink. Uh, here they come. All right. Let's see what we got here. Um, first and foremost, the the first warg. Um, the, makes the save. What's your DC? Um, 16. 16. All right. So since it made the save and it has a rider with the mounted, they get evasion uh, from mounted combatants, uh, subject to a dexterity save. Uh, so it's going to take no damage from that, but the rider um, had one hit point left, uh, so him dead. Uh, yeah. So let's see. As Barbus fires this, he gets pushed back to the edge of his five foot square from the force. All right. And then, let's see... Uh, looks like one little turd goblin has to make a dex save. And the minions are all or nothing on their dex saves. Alright, so he fails, he just ceases to exist. Okay, this wolf um, did not make the save, and thus takes all the damage, which we determined is how much? 14. 14? 14? Okay. All right. 
Uh, in 5e, when you are mounted, you are all the spaces that your mount is. So his rider has to make a save. He failed. 14 damage is enough to uh, disintegrate him. Uh, he is just charred and turned to ash. All right. Uh, big boy giant for sure didn't make the save. So he's going to take 14 points of damage. And then black squad and pink squad, they both failed. And so all six of those guys cease to exist. All right. Leaving behind uh, this guy <laughs> will take over. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Well done. Also, anything or, anything else from yes, Barnabas? Actually, there's a lot else. Uh, okay. Because as he continues to fire his gun, crying out and uh, engaging in the ritual rite of his people, the marshals, he's going to multi-attack. Okay. And he's going for the giants. Okay, is this another ridiculous nope, ray gun? Just, or just, just that's oh, okay. a one, one and done. Uh, okay, that's gotcha. like the next attack is that. Okay. Um, but this is uh, 15 for the giant. Uh, 15 is definitely going to hit the giant. That uh, will no. come with 14 plus mellow damage, which is plus four now. Mm -hmm. um, so 18 yeah. damage? That's, I gotta update that. Yep, All 18 right. damage on that shot. And we're not done yet, because I okay. my gun has the dual fire ability on it now as a fifth level craftsman, or twin shot, I mean. So if there is an enemy within five feet of the target I just hit, I can make another ranged attack. So right, I'm go going to it. shoot the uh, Wurg that's next to him. Okay. And here comes another one. 26. Yeah, 26 Yikes, definitely is. hits. Uh, for seven damage, nothing added to it. All right. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. There is something. I'm using incendiary shells for these two shots. So there is mm -hmm. a D6 on both both of those attacks. Mm. Okay. All right. And that is my turn. And uh, I'm at the end of initiative. Do they steal into the next initiative? For sure. They intend yeah. to steal into the next initiative. Yep. All right. Um, I had to switch some of the, I had to roll some people in because of, um, well, you know, like the, the other guys died. So someone had to take over that initiative spot. Um, as the round ends, uh, and I oh, move back. your layer action never got, went off. So I assume, oh, no, when we do active initiative, layer action happens at the end of the round. Okay. So at the end of the round, um, your allies on the on the wall are going to go ahead and fire off uh essentially catapult attack they are going to target this clump of dudes back here all right so let me roll some deck saves for those guys uh, let's see Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Oh my goodness. All right. So all them jabronis just took uh, 35 points of damage. None of them made... Well, mm. one of them made the save. So cheer, cheery goblin? No, insistent goblin. Okay. Um... Okay, so he's alive. Uh, he has to become the new boss of this team then. Uh, this guy's dead though. Uh, the rest of them all take 35 points of damage. It is a three by three space essentially where this kind of lands and kind of explodes doing a, a small um, but powerful uh, impact. All right, and 35 for all these guys. Oh shit! So it's All right. Like right. Oh no, it was back there. Uh, yeah, it was back there. So that kills the goblin skirmisher and his warg. Badly damages this guy and kills uh, one of the members of the blue squad. All right. Um, then as we head into the next rounds, a couple things happen. One, uh, more bad guys show up. Oh, pity. Yeah. Huh. Uh, filling the uh, filling the ranks. And again, this column of goblins and giants 
I mean, th this is war. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just like goes back and they're just funneling them down the bridge. Um, so as that happens down in the waters below, uh, the New Jack people uh, continue to fight uh, amongst themselves as this coup, either magical or um, sadly non-magical, uh, continues to uh, play out in the waters below. All right. Heading into the next round. Can we use a fan spell to steal? Uh, sure. It's not, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. It's up to you guys. As a well, yeah, I'm, I'm asking the rest of the party. How many do we have? We got three. Oof. Mm. I think we should save them. This is going to be <sighs> the easiest Celeste. life we have. Celeste is going to be coming up soon. We can get more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that and a I, yes? And I have two stockpiled, so I can... I, uh, it, it looks like this giant is going to steal into the next round. If I'm... we're going to use it, then just make sure we're going to make, make it impactful. Don't just attack immediately after and give it back to but, them. But it's um... highly likely he's just going to try to smash me and then I'll get back. You are you are correct, Jared. This guy isn't going to hold a fucking axe. All right, never mind, never mind. He's a big dumb giant. I'd be shocked if he held his attack. Yeah. Uh, wow. I'll keep my fireball if, ready. If he had yeah. a higher than five intelligence, he would be. his feelings would be hurt so bad right now. All right. Yeah, so. <laughs> All right, he's gonna show you his true power and right. swing his weapon twice. All right, okay. 20 for 13 and a 24 for 32. All right, so on the one that does 32, I'm gonna use my reaction. Okay. Uh, here, let's see. Yeah. We're gonna deflect strike. I'm gonna roll D6 is equal to my proficiency bonus. All right. Uh, and reduce the damage by that much. That's pretty cool, mixed with your mm -hmm, barbarian yeah. ability. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be enough to completely reduce the uh, damage, but hey, it's if better it is, than but, can just well, miss. The 16. But effectively, you, but you're, you get double points effectively because yeah. of rage. Yeah. It's cool. There have been a couple of points ever since we started. <laughs> nice. You negate that. <laughs> so, so yeah, because you're already raging, yep. so it's half. Oh my and God. Then you, uh, 16. you have it again. Yeah. Oh, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. So, uh, I, so that's 13. To the, you can use your action to reduce the attack's damage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the so you would 13. reduce the attack to an 18, and then when you take the, the damage, you would have it from your Barbarian. So you would reduce right. it from 32 uh, down to, what, 16? And then hold take on. 8. I think my math is okay on that. No. Wait, what? 9. Four, 9? No, 32 no, 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 minus no, no. 18? No, that's not right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I am. I am. So. <laughs> okay. So I think I rage it. reduction would go in first. So Ra 32... rage, is da rage is damage that you take. This is reducing the damage that is being dealt. So I take seven damage then. Right, 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 right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So the first one hits me, and then when he s tries to slam down with the second one, uh, I use the Mercurial Reaver to like try to make it a glancing blow oh, as it barely hits me and smashes into the the bridge. Like a Monster Hunter greatsword uh, um, deflection with the yeah parry. Mm -hmm. Oh man, mm -hmm. dope, dope. All right. Um, you did take some damage, though, um, yep. so you may steal. All right, we are going to steal, and uh, spinning the Mercurial Reaver around, we're going to attack this guy twice. Okay. Uh, and he should be at advantage because he was reckless, so I'm not going to be reckless. Mm -hmm. And he's also fairy-fired. Bam, bam. Oh, no. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, well, it's tw 13... Uh, is enough because he's just a big slow dude uh, and you had advantage so a 26 all right oh yes but fair enough yeah so uh, not, uh, 19 on both of those all right 19 and 19 that first 19 uh bloodies him uh as he is bloodied he unlocks a new ability called ground smash um so you may or may not get to see that if he lives long enough to do it all right okay. so i slash him twice and then uh I see this uh, like pop up on my head that he's got this new ability, and then I get the fuck out of there and it, like way over here. Okay, fair enough, because bonus Get action away. turns itself up to 30 feet. And then I'm going to be just out of five feet, so I don't trigger any of these guys' skirmisher. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, that's it for me, I think. All right, uh, would you like to ask you? He cannot steal because he's already acted. Well, you know what? I could probably, I think I might just move to get back with my allies. I don't know. 
Uh, I'm just gonna start cleaving my way through, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna move up this way so that I can get in front of guy. Okay. As you move fast, annoyed uh, Goblin Fleetfoot, they have their bows out, so they are not going to make any opportunity attacks because they would be very sad opportunity yeah. attacks. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's it for me. Uh, I will right. pass. Uh, so I know Orion wants to attack. Isn't there anybody not going to do an attack? All right, sick. So we're going to pass to Guy then. All right, Guy, <laughs> you're up. Woohoo. Guy is going to. Well, you've already hit the the big guy, right? Uh, Jer- yeah, he's past the bloody now. Begun. Yeah. So guy is going to uh, reach to his pocket. He's going to use bonus action to take off the fool, and he's going to place on the old wrinkly man, mm-hmm. and then over exaggeratedly throw any arc mage. Uh, he's going to fire bolts at him. Okay. Uh, Twenty-one to hit for twelve damage. Him being the big giant, right? Yeah. All right, he takes 12 points of damage, staggers back a little bit, but is still going. Oh, my God. Hmm. hmm. I thought that oh. would have killed him. <laughs> That's too Gi- bad. Giants. He uh, cannot steal, though, because he's already been damaged. That was the plan. Yeah. So, action, bonus action is done. Uh, he'll stay where he is and uh, pass the turn. Okay. Uh, who do you pass to? I think he will pass to Layla again. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Now that things are getting closer, um, hmm. okay, she's gonna move to here. She's gonna target this guy with another guiding bolt. She has a reason for this. Um, and then. Mm, Maybe she should save the Guiding Bolt and do a, uh, produce flame. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, if it hits, it hits. All right. Uh, all right, so she's going to do that. And she also gets the archer attack. Yeah, bonus action archer. All right. Um, did they make themselves an attack for that? Ah, yes, they did. Yes, they did. Beautiful. All right. So, um, they blast through. These guys are minions. Um, all of these guys. Uh, beautiful. So, that first attack would kill two. And then the uh, third attack uh, would kill another. Actually... Actually, the third attack should probably finish off the Borg. All right. Um, and that will be her turn. Mm, okay. Uh, let's see. No one that took damage from her survived, so if she controls initiative still. She will pass to Barnabas. Okay. Okay. He's still alive? Who? Near death. The, the giant, he's still oh, he's yeah. near death. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to pop down one square. I'm just going to... Well, that's measure. And then from here, I'm going to unleash three attacks. Two against the giant, one against the warg next to him. Okay. Oh, first I'm going to... Um, hex. Uh, it might, I can do it after this one if you want. I I meant to say it as I was oh, going fine. into it. Uh, you're so, yeah. hex this guy? He- okay. he- yeah, hex. I'm going to hex the warg because I'm confident I'll kill the giant this t- turn. Oh, so. okay. First one goes to the Wurg, um, then that will get the hex damage if it hit. Okay. Does a 13 hit a Wurg. 13 hits the giant. Uh, okay. You're asking if it hits the Wurg? Yeah. Uh, it also hits the Wurg. Great. Okay. So it's going to take that damage, then it's going to take uh, hex damage, it's going to take an incendiary shell, it's going to take four additional points from Mela. Uh-huh. Um, I will then use my twin shot attack to hit the giant. That's going to do some freaking damage. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that giant's dead. Uh, let's see. It's still going to get an incendiary shell and no melee damage, but an additional 5 plus 6, so that's an additional 11 damage. All right, that is enough. All right, and then I'm going to keep shooting at the Wurg with my second normal oh, it's, attack. Oh, it's, it's dead, buddy. 
Oh, I, the work though. I'm back at the work. I, I know. That oh, dead. the work guy too. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> well, that doesn't. Yeah. Then I can shoot the goblin. That. Okay. Fell off. Okay. Uh, if 13, 13 is not going to hit the goblin. Okay. Speaking All right. Of nat 20s, I think I missed a boon when I made my nat 20s. Oh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. My bad, my bad. I said, oh, you get a boon, and then never gave it to you. Uh, let's see. Hmm. There we go. And this uh, bridge is... You and up to two allies can use a reaction to take a dodge, dash, or disengage. Hmm. Okay, so I use my reaction for something else, so other people can take advantage of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I want to cheat my reaction so someone else can take. My turn hasn't come back yet. So All right. Have a... So as this boy I'll... dies, he triggers his death throws. Um, the area where it lands becomes difficult terrain. Giant takes a 15 foot square space. Um, each creature standing in the area. I got to roll a d8 to see which direction he fell. Uh, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh no, that would be onto this that poor, poor goblin. goblin. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so that goblin has to make a DC 15 uh, saving throw. Uh, he ah. does. So he tumbles out of the way. All right. And the force of a giant falling the... isn't like enough to hurt the bridge, right? It doesn't seem like you know this is a sturdy ass bridge. Yeah, it's a very sturdy bridge. Uh, all right, so let's see. Anything else from Barnabas? No, um, right. I guess there's no one to steal. I killed uh, the goblin didn't take damage. Hmm? Okay, um, does anyone want it in particular? Um, otherwise, Orion, take it. All right, Orion, to you. Okay. Um, well, we're gonna start off with more ferocity. I'm gonna get five. So now we're at nine. Okay, um, these guys are able to. I get close. Um, now yeah, we're gonna get closer to them. Um,. Oh wait, Cla uh, Claude has a. That's fine. Uh, we'll move up to here. Does one try to run away or? Um, they seem to be riled up in like this is what they have to do. You are getting big, big um, religious Dallas vibes. Like they have been sent down this kill kill shoot that is the bridge, and they are gonna die for their god. Okay. Um. Then Claude is going to. And keep in mind that wargs, through your experience and study, they are more intelligent than the giants. So to to say that they also have uh, religion uh, is correct. They they are sentient beings. Actually. Uh, Claude's gonna move to here. Okay. Uh, he is going to then spend uh, some ferocity. He's going to try and just kill off some of these. So, final attack. Uh, against the, I guess two goblins that are next to each other. Uh, this okay. Will be With advantage. them being minions, as long as you do enough damage to hit their threshold, it'll kill another one adjacent to you. Okay. With the same attack. Yep. Well, this will be an advantage because of mounted combatant and creature that is smaller than my mount. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, no. This uh, is so... sorry. This would be for Orion. Never mind. But still, okay. does an eleven hit? Eleven does not hit the goblins. They're very quick. All right. Uh, then... You have a bard it. Uh, that was on Orion, not uh, Claude. Ah, damn it. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, item interaction. Orion's going to split uh, twin serpent into two daggers. Okay. And he's gonna make two attack and bonus action on uh, the goblins. Okay, so the first attack does like, what? 14 damage? 18 damage? 14. 14 damage. Um, that is enough to kill both goblins. Okay. With one attack. Then the second one will be at the warg. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, that is only just seven points of damage. 
All right. Uh, the war takes the damage. Snarling at you. Um, and muttering curses in goblin uh, under its breath as it uh, squares off against Claude. All right. And he will just end his just a little bit. And that's it for us. Okay. It took right. damage. I'm assuming it's going to steal. It will steal. It would like that. All right. Um. Yeah, this is fine. Um. It'll just square up again, uh, Claude, and so it will go to buy at Claude. Uh, twenty for fifteen. Oh crap. Uh, yeah, the hits. Okay, Claude needs to give me a strength save or be knocked prone. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So Claude is knocked prone. I guess Orin, you or sorry, not Orin, Orion, you'd be knocked prone as well. Um, and then, unless there's some riding mitigation, but I'm assuming you want to stay in the saddle, right? Yeah, I'll stay in the saddle. Okay. All right. Um, here's a complication. Only a flesh wound. A combatant who has been downed. Oh my! Why do I uh, have the luck of this one all oh, no, the game? None of the good guys have been down. Oh, okay. Um. Hmm. Can't be one hmm. of the good guy New Jack <laughs> lizard folk. <laughs> I mean, I feel weird. like I feel like with me deleting the other combatants, there's only one body left on the field. So with a shudder oh. and a groan, I'm gonna throw this giant back onto the field. Uh, I'm right. sorry, guy. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's just our Jesus, man. It, it just happens. It is our uh, Jesus, but our Jesus seems to favor that one with me. <laughs> it does. It's, it's uncanny. All right. All right. Uh, anything uh, else from this guy? Uh, knocking you prone, he will uh, move to... Uh, you know what? He kind of likes the situation he's in. He going to stay there. All right. Um, he will pass to the ninja squad all right and i still now guys uh or do you right. really want i mean there's a lot of bad guys by stealing, though? yeah i mean i just want to clear some of these minions out so they won't you know gang up on us because but... I mean, never, never mind never mind never mind i think it's fine forget about all it right. yeah all right so these gerbs are gonna take out their dog slicers and they are gonna run in and they are gonna start attacking this lion while he's on the ground. All right, so this is one attack against uh, Orion with advantage at plus five. Uh, here we go. Uh, 22 uh, for five points of damage, and your speed is, again, you know, reduced by 25. Uh, yeah, Orion will force that to hit him instead of Claude. Oh, shit. All right, uh, so you take five, and your speed is reduced instead. Yep. As you bravely throw yourself in front of the dog slicers to uh, protect your boy. All right, fair enough. I'd rather have uh, Orion speed lowered, who's going to be in the saddle most of the time. Than yeah, Claus. yeah, yeah. All right, so over emotional goblin skirmisher is <laughs> going to uh, start riding forward. As soon as he has ridden 15 feet, he is going to take a shot at Aragor with advantage using his. Uh, skirmish advantage. I'm going mm. And he's gonna be firing no. a flame arrow at you. Uh, 17? That misses. Alright. Uh, so the arrow kind of hits against your armor or your magical defenses and shatters. Alright. Uh, continuing with its movement, it will end its turn uh, here. Alright. And then they're gonna pass... You... Mm. These five gerbs back here on the teal squad. Teal squad is going to unfortunately have to treat this guy's difficult terrain. So they're going to do a move and a dash. Get to about there. Alright. Orange squad is going to uh, move up to here. And you're within 80 feet. I think, yeah, they will attack Aragor. So this is one shot uh, with a plus five. Uh, here we go. Uh, so I think I missed by one, right? Yes. All right. 
Oh, wait, no, 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 but the plus five, though. Ah, so it'd be 22. All right, so five damage, and then your speed is reduced by 25. All right, my bad, my bad. Uh, let's see. And then, let's see, these two squads right here, um, well, <laughs> there's not much of a squad. There's, there's literally one guy left from this group. Um, he is going to form up with the black squad. Here we go. So how much damage did I take? Five. Uh, five. Five damage. Five. All right. So then black squad is going to move up to here with a move and a dash. Um, you know what? I think pink squad, they've lost numbers, so they're going to move up and they will just join up with black squad. There we go. Forming a new minion group. All right. Um, let's see. This guy's going to move up to here. Uh, you can go 40 feet, bro. Did you go to, go to there? Okay. Um, he's gonna line up a shot, and let's see, the range on their rocks is... ah, not it's great. It's like 200 plus feet. Plus. Uh, no, these guys are 60, 120. I think Karkalin had a much better, uh, range attack than these guys. Uh, no, you're right, it's 60, 240. Oh my god. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Alright. Um, or they could move closer. That might be good. All right, so they're gonna dash to get to there. All right, uh, this guy is gonna move and dash to here. Uh, blue squad is gonna move forward uh, to here. And then uh, the rest of these jabrones are just going to move closer. Now, so um, that's a target rich environment. <laughs> all right. Fireballing? Yeah, that's when you start fireballing. Uh, right. I don't know, guys. I don't feel like it anymore. Lion breath weapon? Okay, so while they're moving forward, um they would then pass to Aragorn. All right, he's going to... F he's going to fly up 40 more feet mm -hmm. on this side. Because his flight speed is 60. Correct. And important to note, flight, magical flight, gives you hover. So um, if you're not prone, you don't actually fall, you would just flounder in the air. Hmm. Actually, I'm you did lose speed from the slow shot, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's you'd, you'd be down twenty. 40 yeah, you'd, yeah, you'd be down twenty-five. So, I didn't. I didn't make a twenty-five because when I built that, I was like, "Eh, does your speed ever get lowered more than 20? I mean, at that point, you're immobilized. Uh, anyways. All right, so you fly up and then. All right. Uh, he'll take a bead from necklace. Oh. He'll take. Okay. I have five of these. Yeah, he's he'll be wise. He'll take one and just chuck a fireball right. Right there. Okay. Uh let's see. So that is giant, giant, giant. Let me get those handled first. I'm just gonna do top uh left to right, top to bottom. So I'll sort these. So just ignore whatever name tags are associated with it. Uh, hmm. It did not give me a group check. All right, I'll roll each one separately. Hmm. It's not giving me any rolls. Are you using the one that says fireball? Because it's two of them. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh, I see. Let me. I have to scroll down. All right, hold on. There we go. All right, so all three of them failed, Whew. and so they all take 21 points of damage. All right, that will bloody the newcomer at the north, and then I'm going to do one save for all of Orange Squad. 
Uh, so orange squad is wiped out. I'm sorry, orange squad. You guys tried so hard. Um, only one member of black squad needs to roll. Uh, but they cease to exist. All right, and then all of blue or teal squad has to roll. Ooh. All right. Um, I guess that means the squad survived. Nice, because it's all or nothing on minions. All right. Um, and that is your fireball. Fantastic. Okay, that was my action. Mm -hmm. Bonus action. Hmm. We're still doing doing good, so I don't need to go all out. So he'll just. I think you guys are doing fucking amazing, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll. That'll be it. That'll be it. Okay. All right. Um, they have all acted. So all that's left on your team, I believe, is. No, that's it. I think that's everybody. Layla. Oh right. yeah, she went. Okay. Yeah, Layla already went. Okay. I'm going to pass to layer um, action. Yeah, layer action. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they're gonna steal. Obviously, you've damaged a bunch of uh, giants, so they're gonna steal into the next round. Um, but the layer action is gonna go off. They're gonna choose a good spot. Obviously, three giants is pretty tasty. So it will be dashing goblin Fleetfoot, who just says "Why me?" and then the other three. Uh, Gerbs, here we go. This is DC 15. Oof. Alright, here's 5D8 uh, bludgeoning as another catapult uh, hit strikes the area. 26 more damage. That goblin is just popped like a fucking grape. Oof. Wait. And let me get these guys standing back up again. There we go. And that goblin will just remove from the face of the earth. All right. Well, I think this guy should still be prone. Because he was... Uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, he's the one that's going to steal for sure. Um, let's see. All right. As the round ends, more bad guys show up. Hello. Everything's fine. Yeah. What if we can short rest during a sheet? Uh, and you guys hear a uh, roar from high up above, and very briefly, you glimpse a Bithriax um, come down from the sky, and he seems to be holding the, just a fucking massive boulder that he picked up somewhere. He lets it loose. It strikes um, somewhere deeper into the city, uh, and then with a mighty roar, he kind of flies back up towards the clouds. You hear the roar of Dilerian moving to meet him in aerial combat. All right. Uh, moving into this next round. Ugh. What a fucking trooper. The uh, initiative tracker is good stuff. Um, okay, so unless you guys have something against it, this fucking beat to hell buoyant hill giant um, who got knocked down, but he got up again is going to steal the initiative. Going nah, uh, I'm going to take it. Oh, oh you I'm going to use, use, your... use my own DM inspiration. Oh, to take okay. It. Okay. Yeah. All right, because right, I, I have a good setup right now. I'm going to really hope we're going to get a short rest at some point because these Warlock spell slots, they come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Remember why I said resource management at the start? I mean, I you, get, you, said you, that, you, guys, you guys have a 10 minute. You have a 10 minute. Uh, yeah, we do. For the world docs. So, yeah, I can see yeah, you get a 10 so, minute. Yeah, well, exactly. That's what I'm banking let me, on. Let me ask you, do you want to do you want to let a bit three axe attack for 10 straight minutes? I feel like Delirian's dead if, you, if we do that. We literally can't short rest after this. We have to go straight to that fight. Yeah, that's about to, uh, fine. I was about to sending him. And um, have him come pick us up. Ooh, okay. Okay, well, like, like you're gonna try to convince him do not engage, uh, come pick us up, sort of thing? Delirium, yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Wait, how are we Wait. gonna fly and fight him then? He can carry us. Yeah, we're gonna get on his back, like Deathwing style. It'll be great. Oh, my God. 
All right. Uh, um, uh, wow. What happens this round? Let's play through this round. Do you guys mind going a little bit over to see what happens? I got something at three, so I can't do any more than one more round. Or we could stop right here. Knowing I would like to stop right here. I stop right here? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So as we head into this third round of holding the uh, the northern bridge until the dwarven demolitionists can blow it up, uh, with all of that transpiring, we'll go ahead and stop for now. Sounds good. <laughs> I hope that for one, according to according to Pathfinder, um, uh, low difficulty and trivial encounters are important, which as a dm i'm very bad about that i'm very bad at being like hey here's here's shit that's way way below your power level for you to fucking tool up on um having those moments when i play abomination vaults i need them in abomination vaults for morale oh uh, you, you may have if you're familiar with the game we have moments where our morale shatters under the math of severe encounters and then w without the trivial encounters or the or the low level encounters to boost us back up we probably would have quit uh, a long time ago um this is built into my curse of strahd games because it's a open world sandbox and we honor whatever random encounters are rolled so you know they're going to get stronger and many of the encounters are going to stay you know manageable if not trivial so i was kind of happy when you guys chose of the different fights like you guys chose this fight because i was like this is a chance for them to see how much they've grown like since the beginning of the campaign where you guys just are handling this like so well right like i think that you guys are just handling it really 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 well so i hope that you know this this particular encounter is kind of making you guys realize like the growth that you've managed to uh, attain through the game. Uh, so, yeah. Ugh. Anyways. Um, next week, it sounds like you guys are going to try to hold the line until Dilarian can swoop down and grab you guys, or until the bridge is destroyed and the enemy is routed. But, Guy has the right of it. If they destroy the bridge behind you, how are you going to get back quickly to join the efforts against other stuff right because you guys right. are essentially on the north end of the bridge holding them off um off map is that settlement that they abandoned uh early on oh and, yeah and they're like feeding in so this is a huge ass bridge it has these towers as sort of like pylons for the bridge across mm -hmm. the river you're saying this yeah. isn't the whole bridge there's like an entire bridge behind this gate oh that... yeah yeah okay. did you see the kept map saying that <laughs> yeah that that bridge is like a mile or more across like you guys are on the most northern part you yeah. are you're fighting the head of their forces not letting them even get on the bridge yeah this looks like the coast right here so yeah that that mm -hmm. little village is like right over here off camera yeah so you guys are at the most northern end and that makes sense if you want them to blow the bridge up behind you right um but then the the question would be how would you guys have gotten back so big brain guy move to call for delir and to come pick you guys up so we will see how that plays out next week and uh, the oh, yeah. battle continue. Oh. I understand that it's been like 20 seconds of combat, but we have stayed here long enough to hold them off for a bit, so. Yeah, so so here's the thing. You guys probably know by now that I think six second combat rounds are a cool measurement, right? So that we get a general sense of things, but that frequently combat needs to be more than six second combat rounds. So each of your combat rounds is representing like minutes of battling that you guys, you know, that are doing here on the bridge. Uh, dare I say probably five or 10 minutes uh, of fighting. It would be the most tedious thing in the world to make you play out, you know, a tower defense sequence of like 30, 40 minutes, right? Uh, that would be thousands of combat rounds. So each combat round is representative of you guys holding the bridge for a very long time. Um, and these endless monsters kind of coming in are sort of, showing the the action sequences that are summing up that theme if yeah. that makes sense this is like the sped yeah, yeah, yeah. up highlights round or highlight correct round. these are these are the highlights of a long ongoing battle as you guys um give them the time they need to to blow up the bridge so it's very important for scenes like this to sort of set that six second combat round silliness aside uh and be like okay this is a scene more than anything else like uh but also a combat so I feel like that's a good way to sort of uh, handle it. 
All right. Um, I'm just thinking in the back of my mind, yo, Gomek, why don't you come here and get your peoples? Like, why? Buddy, <laughs> buddy, you're still, you're still in the seed. You're still in the seed. Yeah. There's stuff happening. There's stuff happening. Yo, um, Gomek, I, renew our blessings. <laughs> I, I will say this. I will say this. There's, uh, I believe, 80. I think there was 85 different things on the table. So that was just a one in 85 that you got the lizard folk, um, you know, infighting kind of thing. Um, which, I mean, kind of sucks when, like, I was looking at the table, I was like, I was like, I mean, I could think of, I could think of many reasons why it would happen, for sure. Um, they are certainly the most undisciplined of all of the, uh, allies that you've, you've kind of gathered, sort of thing. So, so, you know, it, it is possible, but, um, there were, there's a lot of crazy results of the table that could have happened. And I'm very happy, at least that you got the, essentially the dragon, the dragon burster, or whatever the fuck, uh, like that, that huge dragon playing, uh, war machine that they made. That's going to dragonator dragonator. Thank you. It's going to be huge for that battle. All right. Uh, real quick announcements tomorrow morning or to, today from three to eight, we're going to play Celasta, um, ice ice baby palace um and so we're gonna play through that uh try to make some more progress then tomorrow morning we've got curse of strahd daybreak uh left off in a pretty pretty tense situation so we'll see how that turns out um all three of my curse of strahd games if you're familiar with the campaign they are kind of at the tipping point where things start to go crazy and then um yeah, so it's very interesting to see how each of the three groups is experiencing that part of the campaign um, and what, what they're going to do about it. Uh, we've got Mythic Odyssey tomorrow night. We've got um, nothing on Monday, but I believe we the server is having a book club uh, meeting. If you are interested, the book is like very short, um, only about four and a half, five hour long audio book. So it's not too late if you're interested in, uh, reading the book and checking it out. Um, it was a fascinating book and I'm, I'm eager to kind of talk about it. It's, uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say, uh, without spoiling too much about the book, but it's, it was, um, I had no idea to, what to expect going into it. And I was, uh, astounded, uh, by the book. So it's, it's very title? interesting. Um, how to lose the time war. Yeah, it's, it's very like big brain in my opinion. It's very, it's a very big brain book. Um, so I tried my best to keep up with it, but as, uh, as a soft brain, uh, as a small soft brain, I was like, she is very advanced. <laughs> it was kind of like how I felt like listening to it. Um, and then Tuesday, cyberpunk red and abomination vaults. Uh, we finally used our first um fanspiration die in that in that game um we do accept fanspirations of <laughs> people you know are interested we are on a floor where we know one room has two hydras in it uh so just throwing that information out there um we also ended uh staring at the asshole of the toughest monster we've seen so far <laughs> in Japan. so <laughs> God, uh, yeah you could give them fanspiration or you could try to save the city of friends yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's true. That's true. I don't. We don't really. Need it, honestly, <laughs> we we all set up for Meek Rider. We all have backup characters. So, um, so yeah. Uh, Wednesday, we're gonna play some more Dragon's Dogma. I modded that game. Maybe I modded it too hard. <laughs> I don't know. It kind of just feels like I'm playing Sonic Adventure now. But I, you know, I'm okay with that. Um, so if you want to see Dragon's Dogma played at light speed, um, that's what I'm doing on Wednesday. Thursday, Curse of Nightfall. Friday, I think we're going to do a vodcast about metagaming. I feel like we haven't actually done one about metagaming yet. Uh, I think we I think we did one about what is what is considered homebrew, what is considered third party kind of thing, but we didn't actually do a, what is what is metagaming. I doubt we could cover it all in one hour, but we're going to give it a shot and see if we can talk about metagaming a little bit. Uh, and then Saturday morning, we'll be back here. So, does anybody have any announcements before we adjourn? Or the people out there with those fanspiration points just waiting to be used, send them all to Nightfall. <laughs> That's all.
Send it all to Nightfall. Wow. Nightfall, wow. I don't agree with that statement. <laughs> well, <laughs> if, well, if, any, if, if anything, split 50-50 between Nightfall and Daybreak. <laughs> no, no. What? Daybreak is doing wonderful, right? Yeah. Traders. People have made some... People have made good choices. Or, or, you know what? 30% all just, around. Does, like, or, does Orph allow um, Vanspiration in, in Orph's games? They're, uh, they're, te he, they're technically uh, a Crash Gem game. I don't think so. He but, does. Uh, okay. He does. Oh, he does? Um, oh, he does? Okay. So I guess as part of an announcement, I guess, we're still doing uh, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Uh, mm -hmm. We have gotten to uh, a pretty difficult choice point. Um, I do remember watching Dom's game, and yeah, uh, it's uh, somewhat similar. Mm. That's, all, okay. that's all I'm gonna say for right now. Mm, mm. But like right. I said, Nightfall guys. <laughs> don't listen to Nightfall. this. Don't listen to this man. <laughs> yeah, no right. plushies to offer you. Any uh, any other announcements before we adjourn? Huh? Drink water. Right. Drink <laughs> water. Amen. Hydrate. Yeah, yeah. Hydrate so much that you have to pee during Spider Verse the first time in my life i've ever had to pee during a movie oh, but no. like it was spider verse so i was like i'm not leaving so much happens every 30 seconds of this movie <laughs> i can't i can't afford to go to the bathroom i actually thought at one point i was like if i piss myself would anybody really notice it was like really bad i want to watch it again not dying from the need to urinate um but man hydration lifestyle has been really hard and that was certainly the first time that I considered going back to dehydration mode. Because fucking mummies, they never have to get up during the movie. You know what I'm saying? It's dark, they, you already have a cup. Yeah. They sit it's there, they sit there barely alive. They sit there barely alive, you know? Like, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, uh, any other announcements <laughs> before we adjourn? Nothing else oh? here. All right, great. I hope everybody has a good weekend. And I will continue this next week. Thanks for running. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Everyone for tuning in. Catch you next time.